I think we're back. One second, folks. Goddamn earpiece fell out. Computer turned itself off. What a nightmare we're having. Where did my earpiece go? The little rubber part came off. Whatever. Show must go on without it. Okay. Hmm. I hope they didn't fuck up my recording. Where the hell did this little rubber piece go? Jeez, my Christ. dad tails, my mom cut herself. I okay, we're back live on air, folks. The first girl I dated in college was like, yeah, my mom threw a knife at me. Oh, wait, are we live? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. I'm restarting the timer. We are at three minutes and 20 seconds. Restarting now. I'm sorry, Monkey. What were you saying about how? Hey, give me one second. I got to record. A bunch of women in it, and and you didn't feel like it was directly targeting you, so it made you feel hey, uncomfortable. Hey, recording, dude. You did feel kind of we're small. We're not recording yet. Give me one sec. Oh, stop <laughs> the timer. <laughs> Damn it! Now I can't hear, and I lost my fucking earpiece. Ow. Okay. Damn. Whatever. Wow. All these deaths and. In this podcast, <laughs> we're having a rough time here, folks. The stream, monkeys, headphones, man. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, I think we're back. Let's check. <laughs> okay, sorry, brief uh, technical difficulty, but the point I'm making is, you seem to be blaming me for Marvel's fake wokeness, Asterios. It's not my fault that Marvel, out of their 22 movies, has made 21 movies about male heroes. So then in the big climactic finale, when they shoehorn in, uh, breaking the old rules of, of what is happening in the narrative, they shoehorn in a scene where every, I guess, side female hero teams up together. It feels unearned because those fake woke people at Marvel haven't made any fucking female hero movies. If th That's why when the three male heroes are fighting together, it doesn't seem jarring because they've been fighting together for 22 movies already. Okay, so your solution to the fact that Marvel doesn't highlight female characters enough is to, the one time they do highlight female characters, call it out and call it fake. Yeah, I, because I no because they fucking are tricking people evidence. like you into thinking they're woke. Had, they're being I fake no woke to trick a... you into thinking they I are know. when really they haven't earned wow. what they're doing. Jones, they didn't fucking hero, earn it. Standing up for standing up for female characters. Like, I I like, think I, I am. I think I am. You're accepting a pandering message when I'm saying no. You have to earn it and just make them equal to the other characters. Uh, I, I mean, that, like, honestly, that is a very common argument, like, like with, like, you know, for example, when black female Iron Woman Man came out, everyone was calling it like forced diversity. This is so forced. You know, thank God the alt-right wasn't around before black Spider-Man came out because everyone would be like, they're only making him black because it's forced diversity, pandering, pandering. Yeah, but if you listen back to if, Thor is Asterios, forced diversity, Asterios, Black if you F listen F back to diversity. our Spider-Man review, none of us ever said anything about him being black because it's fine. Oh, they I'm, earned it. I know. This movie, they didn't I, I earn it. I'm not. It's not like I'm being a hypocrite here. I'm very, I, very I, I consistent reason, with my opinions. But the but the reason nobody said that is because. Black Spider-Man came out in the mid 2000s before like the internet went to hell and the alt-right ruined everything. You think that's the reason like, why nobody on Is It Kino said that? Um I yeah, I think I don't I that's fucking that stupid. A, You're wrong. I I think it wasn't a thought meme at the time, but when Jane Foster was made Thor a little bit later, when Sam Wilson was made like cuz there was a summer in Marvel Comics a couple of years ago where it was like we had black female Iron Man, black Captain America, and Lady Thor. And everybody lost their goddamn minds. Um, but, uh, oh, right, oh, by the way, we're at six minutes and 20 seconds of discussing a 30-second uh, long shot in, uh, in a movie. Um, well, I do want to say something real quick uh, about that scene. Um, why is it so wrong to have side characters from movies do things together? 
What, what's what's I, the problem? Because they're to that? they're tricking you guys into thinking they're woke. They think they can get away with making 21 movies focused on men and then give you like you're saying you're trying to make a good point. Oh, it's 30 seconds. Don't focus on it. No, that is the point. They're tricking you with a 30 second scene into thinking they're woke and that they're being equal to women. When in reality, they get one movie out of 22 and they get a 30 second scene fighting together. And you guys think that's enough. That's fucking okay. ridiculous. Well, we didn't bring it up. Again, we didn't bring again, it up. Feminist hero, monkey joke. <laughs> monkey, thank you You, you so can say that sarcastically, but you guys are like, I, you guys are doing the I opposite mean, of feminism. I, I, I mean, monkey, I understand that you only review films that pass the Bechdel test. I know that, like, for the longest time you said, I mean, one of the, here's what we know about Monkey Jones. He has always called for more female-led films. Not just in the one scene of the Avengers that's for some reason made his dick feel small. Like, he's consistently wanted more Marvel female-led movies. And so... I, okay, I okay, mean, okay. No, we, we, we heard the ad hominem movie. version of your argument. Let's hear you actually address my points now. Sure. Okay, I'll okay. address your point like this. Good, uh, good luck. fan service. Not all fan service is for everybody. In Avengers 1, there's a scene where, uh, there's a scene where Black Widow is tied up in a little black dress. Like... That's fan service for boys. And in this movie, there's a scene where there's like a classic Marvel Comics girl power moment. That, by the way, happens in every major Marvel Comics crossover. There's always like a scene where like all, like if you read these comics, there's always a scene where like all the lady X-Men, you see them in a big splash panel and it's fun. It's like, yeah, it's mindless fan service. There's a lot of mindless fan service in these mindless superhero movies. And the reason <laughs> it stuck out to you is because it wasn't specifically targeting you. No, that no, makes you're you wrong. You can't just say weird. that like it's the and fact. Like, That's not why I have a problem with it. a minority. Oh no, are we being replaced? You can't just make arguments on my behalf and, and attribute them to me. I never said anything like well, I mean, that. But I mean, but you're saying that I liked it because I because I thought it was woke. I mean, that's you making an argument so on the, my behalf. That so it was but, woke. but the reason why you actually like it is because it's a mindless fan service that you can shut your brain off and enjoy. Is that what you're saying? I like seeing a lot of the favorite well, characters no, that I have in these that, movies do things together. It, you it's like the these characters? It Jeez. It, it's the reason it didn't stick out to me, but I knew it would stick out to you, which is why I said to myself when I was about to go to this on this episode of Is It Kino, make sure to start a timer before we get into this argument. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, for me, I was just like, yep, there's some fan service. I hope some girls in the audience like this. Yeah. You hope the little girls like being spoon-fed instead of actually getting female-focused superhero movies? I think we can do both. I mean, for me, I'm yeah, a guy I wish they would do both. Casting. I wish they would have earned it by actually doing both, but they didn't. And well, you're accepting it as being okay, and I'm saying it's not. Well, well, I mean, I'll tell you this: like, I'm someone who's actually done casting and written like commercials that have been seen around the world. And what I do is this: like, sometimes I'll just write in this character's black, or if there's a scene where two people kiss, I'll write in this is a gay couple. Now, people often accuse me of like, is this just pandering? Is this just fake diversity? Are you putting in two gay characters kissing instead of a straight couple kissing because, you know, you're just trying to like stack the deck and make up for the fact that advertisers never targeted these segments? And my answer is always just like, well, every everything looks forced if you're looking for it. You know, I put in a gay couple kissing in this commercial because it's like, Unfortunately, that's the only way we're ever going to get any kind of diversity is if somebody literally just writes in, they are gay or they are black. And like one of the ways that we get to good, even feminism is through this kind of like, you know, forced, maybe obvious proto feminism of all the girls punch someone like, yeah, maybe 10 years from now, that scene won't stick out to you because it 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 won't have to. It'll just be so normal yeah, to have a scene where the 10 weird girls thing is that people. Like, for some reason, the new version of diversity is segregation. I think if you want to be a true feminist moment, why not have all the men and women together the whole time? Why do we need to segregate and give the women all their own little scene together? Right, you know, egalitarianism. The time. The classic, yeah, the classic egalitarianism well, argument. See, you um, always say these things like, you sarcastically say, oh yeah, egalitarianism. That is legitimately the correct way of being where everybody is equal. I don't know how that's a joke to anybody. Well, I mean, it, 
if it was correct, then it would be happening. But like, that's you know, not right? what it, how's what logic is that? If something is correct, uh, it would be happening. That's never been true in the history of humanity. Well, I mean, so you're saying that pure equality would be better. Well, how do we get there? Like, we get there through like through segregation, more things like this, through more things like this, I, yeah, essentially. I mean, I mean, the thing is, you know, pe like, I'm sure a lot of people were like, hey, J this Jackie Robinson guy's only been put on this team because he's black. Oh, people are only going to see him in this baseball game because he's black. It's like, yeah, well, you got to start somewhere. I mean, yeah, there was only one black baseball player at one point. I'm sure people called it forced diversity, pandering, a stunt marketing appealing to woke 1940s yeah, whites the, the difference here is jackie robinson players and serious let me let me four. destroy your metaphor real quick jackie robinson was sure. the one black guy on an all-white baseball team this was all jackie robinson's it'd be like if 12 black guys came together and they said yeah this is a diverse team it's not yeah yeah, but you know how, like, when Captain Marvel came out, you've been doing nothing but making fun of it, like, before and since? It's like, that was the first female-led Marvel superhero movie, and you, and I mean, you guys on Izakino have been mocking it pretty consistently. I mean, we liked Wonder this, Woman. I mean, just because Captain I, I, Marvel's a bad movie doesn't mean, you know, it's because I just it's didn't a like yeah, that but, movie. Yeah, the movie oh, was oh, bad. No, no. Oh, no, granted, I, but you guys also, when you make fun of Captain Marvel, you're not always making fun of it because it's a bad movie. Like, a lot of times, you know, you bring up Captain Marvel, like, in a sarcastic way because, you know, you're making fun of the fact that a lot of women liked the movie and, you know, it kind of resonated with them. Like, Captain Marvel stuck out to you guys because it felt weird and forced and girl powery. A lot of people made fun of, like, the Shiro language and... This and that. And a lot of people are calling Captain Marvel OP. Why does she have to be the strongest? Is it because she's a woman? It's kind of like you can't win. You know, when yeah, there's a scene I mean, that has all these female characters punching people, you call it out as forced diversity. But when Marvel makes 20 movies that star males and then one movie that stars a female, everybody calls that out too. Holy it's shit, like, man. I don't know what you guys want. <laughs> I want How long does this rant have to be? Jesus fuck. No, you because start a timer well, and then you rant for 14. 10 minutes. As of right now, it's 14 minutes long. Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> well, 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 to get a word in. The problem with I'm Captain Marvel is I'm not... I'm not the one that raised this question. The, the problem the with Captain Marvel is not back. that she is a woman. It's that the movie is bad. It's boring. The character is overpowered, unrelated to their gender. The character is overpowered, which makes her boring. Captain Marvel has never faced a foe that was a an actual threat to her because she can go Super Saiyan, uh, magic uh, uh, star Mario, and destroy everything. That's a very boring character. She's just That's the Marvel not version the of Superman. Fault. That's not the character's fault. It's That's the how writer's the character fault. Is. It's the director's fault. That's well, why no, the character I mean, is not interesting. Captain Marvel is literally Marvel Comics is Superman. Yeah, and Superman's I mean, yeah. the most boring DC character there is. No, uh, Superman is fine, well. but Captain Marvel is not fine. Captain Marvel is a piece of shit character. You <laughs> could say this is four star diversity, whatever, it doesn't matter. Look at Wonder Woman. They had an island full of, of Amazon warriors, and that was fucking fine. And then we have. No, it was Captain not Marvel. fine. There were tons of people who were complaining about Wonder Woman when it came really? out. Really? Because that movie yes. was. Everyone likes yeah, that. I, Come on, and man. And serious. there were definitely people who were upset that there was a black Spider-Man, too. Like, uh, when that was first announced, when Bendis was writing <laughs> I've Miles. I've never heard of this. Miles. Come on, man. Oh, I mean, I mean, there were, but there was no, like, online echo chamber to kind of amplify that, like, crazy like there is now. Um, yeah, the alt-right, I mean, like, didn't exist as of then. But if you went into any comments section, it was, it was a trash fire. I'm pretty sure the alt-right oh, yeah. existed for a while now. Um, yeah, but I mean, Black, but Black Spider-Man came out like a, maybe a couple of years after 9-11. Like it was way before Gamergate, which is kind of like well, the birth of the modern all right. Um, but, but I mean, I mean, Monkey, I think it's disingenuous to say that, that you've never made a joke about Captain Marvel that has had nothing to do. I mean, yeah, you don't like that movie. I think that a lot of the jokes you've made about Captain Marvel aren't that the movie's bad. I think you just kind of like tweaking Feminist. I mean, it's the same reason that you went on that campaign about like, oh, if Black Panther wins an Oscar, I'll eat my hat or whatever. Like, like what you're doing there is you're tweaking, con you're tweaking like progressives <laughs> on the internet that happen to like, you know, that happen to like uh, uh, Black Panther. No, Black what Panther, I'm doing uh, is I'm fighting back against people who are saying 
a, a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10 movie is best picture worthy because of its diversity. I think that it's very shallow thinking and that movie should be judged based on their quality, not based on the color or the gender of their cast. Yeah, but the blind side was also, I mean, there's been so many movies nominated for best picture that are bad. I mean, the reason that you make fun of Black Panther and the reason that like you get kind of a charge or a little thrill out of it is because you're tweaking like progressives on the internet like it's the same reason people said wakanda isn't real like yes granted wakanda isn't real nobody thinks wakanda is real like that's a factual statement but the reason the alt-right <laughs> loves that phrase is because it's a way to like tweak and flick at online progressives and it works they take the bait every time i mean it's fun to trigger people uh, we're at 17 minutes, by the way, of this discussion. Yeah, thanks to you. You think we could just kick Asterius now? I think this is getting out of hand. These, these are literally bad movies, okay? Black Panda was not good. Cat Marvel was not good. They're fucking overhyped. And we, of course, we're going to attack the fact that they're overhyped for no fucking reason. Why not? Come on. We, we I, mean, I mean, Harold here. and Kumar go to White Castle is also not a good movie, but you guys don't bring that up nearly as much. It's as not overhyped. No one cares about it. It wasn't nominated for Best Picture. I mean, do you want me to pull up a list of other Best Picture nominees that are bad? No. I mean, Crash won No, Best we don't Picture. need any what about guys, him right here. <laughs> you, all you right, guys, all guys, right. Don't... Everybody shut up. E-Rich, what, what else do you want to talk about in this movie? We've covered two moments. All right, and that is uh, 18 minutes of a 30-second <laughs> scene. <laughs> And by the way, Florian, I'm not the one that brought up the girl power scene. Monkey no, you're Jones just the is. one who won't shut up about it. <laughs> well, if he's going to bring uh, it up, I mean, e I feel rich, like we have to e rich. It. Monkey, Monkey, as a fan of Back to the Future, how did you like the time travel in this movie? Well, as you guys may recall, I said that, uh, uh, what was that called? A Happy Death Day 2 was Back mm. to the Future Kino. And this right. movie is, this. Ve is yeah. very similarly. It's Back to the Future 2 Kino. When you and I, I predicted this on Boomer versus Zoomer. We'll talk about that on the next Boomer Zoomer. I predicted that the movie would be them going back in time to the other movies. Mm -hmm. And did I did I like it? Yes, I liked seeing the 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 procedural uh, happenings of, of of what happens sort of behind the scenes. You have Joss Whedon's Avengers, where they have this shot of all the Avengers standing in front of Loki, and they're all pointing the weapons at him, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is a cool-looking shot. But realistically, what is happening, like, in the reality of the film? This is kind of awkward. Why are they all just standing like this for so long? So then in this movie, they go back, and there's, like, a little line, like, Cap or, uh, Iron Man says, man, we sure did stand in front of Loki for a long time doing nothing. And then when you see the the fake shield agents come in and retrieve the stuff. I thought that was cool to see the, the kind of stuff that the movies uh, wouldn't usually bother with because it's sort of the minutia of the reality. Right, right. Um, I mostly don't have a problem with the time travel in the movie. Uh, it essentially is using the Bill and Ted rules of time travel, which is you can cool. take anything you want from the past as long as you put it back then. <laughs> sure. Man, I got I got to... I gotta disagree here on, uh, entirely. I think this movie was just jerking it off the entire time, but then it, co it couldn't come because it didn't have any balls. It, it went back wow. to revisit these, these movies the entire time, these, these pivotal moments in the other movies. And it's like, oh, look at these movies. Oh, look how much our characters have come now. Oh, Hulk, he doesn't want to smash anymore. Now he's going to tap the card gay. No, Hulk's this is... my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, half Hulk, half Banner, like, unenthusiastically well, started to smash. It was great. Well, let, let me explain to you why it didn't have any balls. You see, okay. when... when when in Infinity War they killed off half the cast, that that had balls. That was great. But in what about the entire movie, first hour of this movie when they're dealing with that fact? Well, they're not really dealing with that fact. Yes, they know. are. I, I think this was well. It was pretty weak, and they just brought them back. Ooh. All they did was just travel back in time to bring back all the guys. They they just fought so hard to just undo everything. It would have been way cooler dead. if they would have just had to live with it. And they, they've had one hour in this. Why didn't we see more movies where, where they actually have to pick up the pieces? Why couldn't we have seen like a Captain America trying to pick up the pieces of this broken world but not getting anywhere because the other people won't talk to him or anything cool like that? All we get is just this movie where they just waste time in this already long movie going back to the past and just thinking about all the things that happened. 
and then they just reverse it all so nothing happened it would have been way cooler I mean, if they just had the future marvel universe with right. now half the characters and that would have been better too because there's too many fucking superheroes in the marvel universe it, it would have been so smart to just call the herd just take off half of them it would have been great I actually don't disagree with most of what you said, even though I was like angry at you there <laughs> because you're right. Like the idea of half the population disappearing and how everybody has to get, get used to that and figure out how to move on from that is a great idea. But that's why I loved the first hour of this movie, which it was what everybody did in response to that. Clint Barton goes on a fucking insane murdering spree in Japan, killing a bunch of Yakuza dudes. And he's gone to the dark side because he lost his family. Like, I love that shit. Because it's like an alternate universe take. This is how these characters react when the worst possible thing happens to you. My favorite ever TV show is The Leftovers. And the first hour of this movie was essentially The Leftovers in the Marvel Universe. So I did really enjoy that they actually dealt with the fallout from the end of the last movie. Man, wouldn't it have been so cool if we could have seen a whole movie about that guy killing the Yakuza's? Wouldn't that have been way better than wasting like an hour in in, in already bloated yeah. movie for that? But we need to wait like five years to get to Endgame then. Like you'd need to have so many movies or TV shows in between that. Like that would be insane. Yeah, I, well, I, I think it'd they, be interesting they... if they did like a like a, a Disney Plus miniseries, like a, a, a after the snap or something. And it's a anthology where we see, you know, each each character gets an hour long episode and we see what they mm -hmm. did for those five years. That could be a cool idea. Yeah, it's great. I think we're going to end up seeing a lot of stuff like this. This is the first Marvel movie. Because, you know what, whenever they do, like, a big crossover in the comic books, they always try to launch, like, five books out of it. And, I mean, this is the first Marvel movie we're seeing that is, that is like, pulling off that comic book trick. Like, we're clearly going to yeah. see Asgardians of the Galaxy. We're going to see uh, Captain America fighting through time. We're going to see cool new black Captain America. Um, you know, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna see Wand Division, which is based on those cool Tom King comics. Oh, and those comics are amazing. All. Yeah, if we explored those five years, I mean, like, because they start to explore a little bit in the comics with like Captain America's support group that he has at Shea Stadium, mm -hmm. and it's really powerful and really cool. And if I can, if I can mention non-forced diversity um <laughs> during that scene where captain america is doing the support group one of the russo brothers one of the directors of the film he's uh he's playing a, a a gay character and that wasn't forced it's just a character who's gay a 18 gay guys didn't show up all together to fight together it was just <laughs> a character who was gay and i was okay with that hysteria he's, he's gonna call me alt right again motherfucker <laughs> am i alt never right now a movie before He's never been in any of these movies. How are you supposed to handle the fact that he's suddenly there? He suddenly appeared. <laughs> because oh, yeah, he's a character who's in just one scene for a second, and he has one line. All the female characters who were in that like big battle scene were already established as they're having superpowers. And I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this again, E. Rich. I could bring up that none yeah. of them have ever met each other before, and it doesn't make sense that the Wasp would abandon Ant Man, who who she's helping. The Avengers is entirely about a group of heroes who've never met each other before. Like you, you can make this argument for. Mm, I think you're wrong, but uh, let's let's move <laughs> All right. on. We'll we'll save this for uh, part two, Infinity right. War oh, discussion part two. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you just bring that on Boomer versus Sumer? You talk about forced diversity for ten hours. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> this movie's not only Back to the Future Two Kino; it's Interstellar Kino. That's oh, right, shit. folks. Interstellar. Oh, no. Movies where parents don't age, but their kids do, and they find out all in a second, and they see that their kids are all grown up, even though they haven't aged a day. I love that shit. It hardly ever happens in movies. We have it in Interstellar. And now in this movie, Ant-Man, he's been gone for five years, but for him it's been five minutes, folks, and he gets to see his daughter all grown up. I love that kind of shit. They, uh... it, also, it also works as an Ant-Man joke because he is a character that shrinks and grows, and he got to see his daughter grow in about five seconds worth of time. Wow. I, Joke's it's so funny I, I didn't laugh. That, Pottery. That is, I really... <laughs> I enjoyed how subtle but awesome, like they are very clearly setting the stage for Young Avengers as well. Right. Uh, right. Young Avengers is a another really cool comic series where like Hawkeye and the Vision kind are like the kind of like the camp counselors of this group of cool Young Avengers. And Cassie Lang, like she's gonna get an Iron Man suit. 
in the opening scene, we see Hawkeye and his daughter. She's going to become... Um, Mini Hawkeye. What, oh, wait. Yeah, I forget the... I, I want to say spoiler, but I know that's from the Batman comics. But, yeah. like... Um, but I mean, I think I think maybe it, she'll just also be called Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Um, yeah, doesn't she at some point, or isn't it Kate? There's a Kate character that takes over for Hawkeye. It's not his daughter. It's just a woman that he trains. Yeah, I I think that instead of Kate, they're going to use his daughter. You know, it's it's like I don't think we'd have right. a scene where she was learning to shoot arrows if like they weren't eventually going to give her the bow. Um, yeah. Well, what else it, is Hawkeye going to do to bond with his kids, though? I, I think that's all Hawkeye does <laughs> is just shoot arrows all day. Oh yeah, the chat is saying Kate Bishop. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that like she is she's very clearly like standing for Kate Bishop. Um, right. you know, if from the from uh, what is it from Black Panther? We've got the young girl who's good with technology. Like sure, you know, she'll be yeah. there, Tony Stark. Um, I just you know I I think that. I, this movie was so great, not in that it provided closure, but it also provided a million new openings. And it's like, yeah. this movie, it's it was like, in a, like, it's a screenwriting accomplishment and like an accomplishment in acting and editing and like the music was great. The visual effects were incredible. It's just, it, it like, it was, I wonder if it will win Best Picture this year. No. Just because... I mean, it, I think it'll at least be nominated. No, Lord of the Rings: Return so of the much. King, my brother. No, this huh? this cape shit. This cape shit will not be nominated. Infinity War is a better film, and that wasn't nominated. Return of the King swept the Oscars. Return of the though... King is much more prestigious and and respected than I think like a cape shit movie like this. I don't think the Oscar, the Academy is going to nominate. They said the same game. exact thing about fantasy movies before that one. Yeah, but Lord of the Rings okay. was way okay. better. Okay, no, no, Everidge, put your fucking money where your mouth is then, motherfucker. <laughs> 25 bucks. You give me 25 bucks uh, if they don't nominate is just, Endgame. It's just nominated, yeah. If it's nominated, I will totally put oh, 25 bucks. Easy. E uh, easiest 25 Black bucks Panther last year. Black yeah. Panther opened up the fucking uh, floodgates, and no. this year the Oscars are looking to get more uh, normie. Normie you have no idea how wrong you are, and it's gonna be delicious. Uh, I guess a year from now, when I when I take my twenty five bucks and I, I guess, uh, what, what's the worst thing I could do with Eridge's twenty five dollars to make him mad? Like, <laughs> donate it to like a, a charity that supports white men or something? Is there such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. It's been made illegal. I, mean, I think. Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos was supposed to do that, but then he ended up just stealing all the money. Uh, yeah. Milo Yiannopoulos <laughs> took a bunch of money he was going to give to like poor white males who couldn't get into college, and then he just ran away with the money. I mean, he is um, a white male, though, so it's not like it was false advertising. A, a white male did right. benefit. Come on. If you he give did it, help a white male. If you, give, um, if you I, gave it to Milo, that would be about the worst thing you could do. With it. <laughs> I'll buy a bunch of copies of his book. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous I, Friend, I, I think is what I it's think, called. I think that this movie will be nominated. I don't know if it'll win. Like, I wasn't a humongous fan of the Lord of the Rings movies. I like. I thought the first one was just terrible. I thought the oh, second wow. one was better, and the third one was Jeez. great. Um, but uh, but you know, the reason it won was was as a nod to the series as a whole. Like, mm -hmm. they weren't saying Return of the King is the greatest movie. They were saying we like that you did this. We like that you made these crazy movies out in the woods and revolutionized uh -huh. visual effects. So here you go. You know, it's kind of like how often a movie that is awesome but not famous will get the best screenplay award. Like mm -hmm. Rushmore won for best screenwriting. Um, uh, Lost in Translation won for best screenwriting. They didn't win best picture. Um, you know, it's kind of just like a, hey, we see it. Here's a nod. So I think it'll get... I, I don't think it'll win because I think that'll be too obvious, but I will. Th I do think it'll get a nod. Are you willing to put twenty five dollars on the line? <laughs> oh yeah, that it'll get nominated. Yes, oh. I don't think it'll win. But okay, I'll bet so twenty five that it so gets nominated. So a year from now, ten. So a year from now, I'm going to spend fifty dollars on Milo Yiannopoulos books. Is what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> I mean, it'll be your money at that point. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yep. It's like for me, Endgame is the culmination of 22 movies that Marvel has put out, and they've really, I think, built up this huge audience and this huge like like it 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 is not like hated by critics. It is it is still pretty pretty highly esteemed, regardless. Audiences sure. love it. Like I think I don't everybody it. pretty much comes up around these movies and says they're really good. So like I think you could definitely say Titanic is a better movie, but I think that's as audience bait. Uh, type of movie that 
that won the best picture of the year it came out right yeah i think uh, so yeah yeah, yeah, because because what's his name? The director literally said, "I'm king of the world" at the yeah. Oscars when he won. <laughs> right. Okay, okay well, I guess we'll we'll leave the bet at, at that. You guys think it'll be nominated? <laughs> I, I don't think it will. I guess we'll come back a year from now and see who was right. I want to talk about Asterios, a character I think you can relate to more than anybody else. Uh, Boomer Thor. Thor becomes oh, <laughs> Thor becomes a boomer in this movie, and I'm I'm really excited to talk about that. He, I, I mean, he looks like Lebowski, and they even call him out as Lebowski. <laughs> it's, it's fucking fantastic. I, I thank God that like they're letting Chris Hemsworth be funny. He right. was the right. only funny person in Lady Ghostbusters, a movie that had four professional female comedians in it, and he was the only one Ooh, getting laughs in any of his goddamn scenes. Um. Like I, it's amazing that they've discovered that Chris Hemsworth is good at comedy. Like the scene where he's where he's like trying to tell his mom, like I'm not from the future, and then he immediately <laughs> goes, "Yes, I am." <laughs> I, I want to talk about the the character arc of Thor, because at first, when we see Fat Thor, at first I thought, "Oh no, oh no," because we just had uh-huh. we just had Ragnarok and then Infinity War. And in those right. movies, Thor becomes the most tragic Shakespearean character of all time. Five years ago, this guy's 8,000 years old. And in the last five years, his mother died, his father died, his brother died. Uh, three Half of four- his people died. No, three fourths of his fucking people died. Oh, really? Well, because Where are the other, Thanos the other cut them in half from? once and then again uh-huh. with the snap. So three fourths of his people oh, have died. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Holy how, shit. How um, many of them are alive now? Uh, Enough to fill out a small town in yeah. fucking Norway. Where the fuck well, they didn't bring, they didn't snap anyone back to life. Oh but, no, they did because a bunch of Asgardians are fighting in the final scene. Right. But then, okay, on, right. on top of all of that, Thor feels the the weight, the burden of the entire universe. He was the one who had the Thanos killing weapon, and he missed. He had his shot to save the universe, and he missed. And As a result, trillions of people are killed. I don't think any character in any piece of fiction has ever suffered and failed as much as Thor in these movies. And I sincerely mean that. Who has ever had the guilt and weight of trillions of deaths on their shoulders because they failed? Star-Lord. Uh, well. No, (laughs) he got snapped, so he goes out. So th- so I'm but thinking I, so 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 to to complete my thought here I'm thinking okay so Thor is the most tragic character in any of these movies so th- now to see him as a fat comic relief, r- relief I'm thinking well they, they they ruined it but then I think about it a little bit uh, more and I realize no right. no this is logical and this is great he is so broken the the god of thunder this heroic king of asgard has been reduced to a fat alcoholic asperger uh, slob fucking playing <laughs> fortnite streaming it for f- donations on on youtube so fucking <laughs> pathetic well, Somebody would have to fail at, in the magnitude of trillions of innocent lives lost <laughs> to become that fucking pathetic, a fat alcoholic playing Fortnite. So I think that was the perfect, the perfect logical next step for this character. Well, Monkey, you're missing a Beautiful. beat here because one of my favorite oh. parts of this movie is the part where they go to Thanos' hut after he's accomplished everything. He's just kind of sitting there like he's just kind of retired. He's done exactly what he wanted. And they beat the shit out of him, ask him if he still has the Infinity Stones, but he doesn't anymore. They can't un- reverse everything that he's done. And Thor can kill him, and he does. And that's a great moment where the audience is like, yeah, they got him. But then, like, that doesn't reverse anything. No. Like, I love that, like, emptiness of, like... Yeah, they, he got they, empty they, revenge, and it, and it didn't make him yeah. feel any better. And that is the kind of awesome, like, kind of nuanced thing that this movie brings to the to the table here that I just absolutely love. I yeah. love that. Man, the um, audience will, laughed oh, sorry. so hard. When he when he cut off his head and he said, "I I aimed for the head this time," they, they were yeah. just laughing out so hard. Did they did they cry? Uh, did they enjoy it for you as well? I mean, did I they... think the audience had bloodlust to watch Thanos fucking die. But <laughs> bloodlust. I mean, yeah. Damn. Mysterious. What were you gonna say about Thor? Oh, I was gonna say when I saw Fat Thor, I had the same exact concerns because often in a time jump something you do like there's a lot of media that will do that will be like cut to one years later cut to five years later like 
DC recently put out like a series called like One Year Later. And um, they did the same thing with 52. Uh, Battlestar Galactica jumps one year in the future during Gaius Baltar's presidency. One of the easy ways to establish that a character has changed is that you make them fat. <laughs> I, you see it all the time. Um, like Lee Adama in Battlestar Galactica, he yep, goes from yep. like a hot male ingenue to a big fat mess. And it's often just not you. It's it's just, it's so easy. It's, it's, it's like right. a... Because it's a it's an easy visual signifier, but, but I love that he was. Uh, I love that they made it much much deeper. Like the scene where he meets his mom, the scene where he talks about losing everybody. Like mm-hmm. um, they still use the fact that he's fat for plenty of fat jokes, which I also enjoyed. Well, let me but, ask um, you. Let me ask the panel this. I've seen a lot of think pieces saying the film has a lot of fat shaming because of Thor as a comedic <laughs> character. So as a person of size, Florian, please mm-hmm. tell me how did this affect you? A POS. <laughs> yeah. Wow, amazing. You're the you're the Is Aquino resident person of size, so I wanted to you're ask Florian's shaming. opinion. That's amazing. Well, I gotta say that so Were you offended by perfect... this uh, character? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well The to scene me, when Sora... Thor eats a whole corn Damn pizza, you. you're like, wow. <laughs> you're doing it to me right now, oh no. <laughs> Alright, so Sor symbolizes this whole Avengers just franchise he just got so fat and bloated with so many pointless heroes so many pointless stories going on at the same time oh man florian all he can do now is just crack stupid jokes and that's all he's been reduced to florian i feel like we haven't gotten enough of your perspective tonight it sounds like you're really down on the movie do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that well, I have one more rant to do about Captain Marvel. I don't know if, if that would fit in right here. I, I think me and Mysterios are ready to hear it. <laughs> Let's I do bet, it. I bet you are. Uh, well, the thing is, I don't, I don't care if she's a woman. Obviously, I mean, that's fine. I don't fine know. Even. Alt-right guys five years ago cared, so you must care too, Florian. I don't know. I mean, even if if anything, that's better because it's hot. But Captain Marvel was <laughs> was a shit tier character. Okay, she was just the worst thing that ever happened to the Marvel Universe, and it's definitely the worst thing that happened to to Marvel Endgame. What the fuck is this character even doing in this movie? She is completely overpowered, and she completely refuses to take part in the action until the very end. What the fuck is the point of that? They call her to Earth, she does nothing. She she goes away because there's earthquakes, and then they don't call her back. Is, was that a mistake? Didn't they call her back? Would she have come back? Why didn't she just stick around? I guess they just forgot to call her again. Is that really what happened? I think Is that a joke? I think Joe and Anthony Russo wanted nothing to do with that character. And the, the studio executives said, no, you have to include this character. And they didn't know what to do with her because, uh. yeah, she is fucking Superman magic powerful. So they had to, like, write her out of the movie for 98% of it. And it kind of makes you wonder, is she really that much of a hero? <laughs> like, the entire universe is at stake and she wants to go help other planets that are having earthquakes? What the fuck? <laughs> we have the potential to reverse the snap and you're going to go fuck off to a different planet? What are you doing, you stupid well, moron? I, I don't know if she knew about this time travel plot. I think she left before they did any of that time travel stuff. And she just gave up. She just left. Well, well, she went up. to become like the universe's Avengers. Like, like the thing she always said was like, "Yeah, Earth has superheroes; other planets don't." Which is true. I mean, you know, we see Hala. You know, we see like both the. I mean, the Kree homeworld, or uh, what's the name of the homeworld from uh, the original Guardians of the Galaxy? The one where they stick the Power Stone. Is that Hala? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, Hala doesn't have any superheroes. I mean, the Kree kind of have superheroes but their superheroes are dicks because they killed all the scrolls <laughs> damn well i still got more to say by the way but go on no no you, you fin- finish your uh your rant florian no, so, sorry sorry to interrupt oh no problem okay so essentially i don't know does that make any sense i guess they forced her to to be part of it but then why didn't they just do it cool why didn't they just make her right all they had to do was make it so they have a cool ass fight with with Thanos, and then at the end of it, he's he he lets them know he's actually destroyed the stones. Instead, he's he's just there and he's pathetic. They're pathetic. Everyone's pathetic, and and Captain Marvel uh, fucks off to another planet. Why didn't they just make a cool ass fight where he kills Captain Marvel? Whoa. And then when they snap- when they snap the fingers, she's back. Why didn't they just do that? You'd have a perfect explanation why she isn't here, and she could still kick as much ass. No, Florian, you're fucking... What? what? You want Thanos <laughs> to kill Captain Marvel? 
in the beginning yeah, so of the she, movie? Yeah, so they can bring her that back. That is not his role at the beginning of his movie. He fucking did the thing he was supposed to do. He he he's happy. He's like he's like complete. That he he's he's done the thing. Yeah, well he's, that's too bad though, him. isn't it? Because you've made a, a Superman and you've made a Thanos, which is the only other character powerful enough to kill her. So now you're gonna either but have the her point, side for no good reason. The or she's point is, die. you have this, you have this superpower. You have Captain Marvel, and she can't bring those people back. Well, like speaking you have of all that uh, power, and it's not actually gonna help you here. Speaking of uh, Thanos, sort of being, uh, you know, as Florian said, sort of. Uh, what down in the dumps, boring at the beginning of the movie, or or whatever you're saying. I have a fan theory, folks, that Thanos is the most pure soul in the universe, folks. <laughs> As oh, we boy. saw during the big final fight scene, he was able to lift Stormbreaker, but only those pure of heart can lift those Thor weapons. How could this be? Is Thanos actually pure of heart? Let's take a look. They say, folks, and correct me if I'm wrong. I might be misquoting this. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Am I wrong? Is that a saying, E. Rich? That's a saying, yeah. That is a saying. Guess yeah. who had absolute power? One, Superman. Mr. Thanos. He had the Infinity Gauntlet, but it did not corrupt him absolutely. Instead of ruling the universe as an, as an uh, on, omnipotent god with these stones, he did, his, he did his mission. He thinks he balanced and saved the universe. And he destroys the stones. What? Who among us can say if we had infinite power, we would use the power to destroy the power? None of us could fucking say that. The level of restraint and self-discipline it must have taken for Thanos to destroy those stones when he could have just ruled with an iron fist indefinitely. I think uh, from his point of view and really from the point of view of his uh, inner determination, he's the most pure of all of us. Am I wrong? Um, I I honestly wow. do think that Thanos is one of the best characters in the MCU. I mean, it, like, forget being the best villain. Like, being the best villain in the MCU is like being the hottest girl in Cleveland. Like, yeah. But the but the thing about Thanos is, even when he loses, like, the, Tony Stark gets the glove, snaps away all of Thanos' forces. Like, does Thanos like bitch and moan about it? Does he like jump up and down and go like, no? <laughs> my plans like no he just sits down takes off his helmet and like accepts his fate like when thanos does exactly what he says he's gonna do he snaps away the glove saying that its continued existence would only tempt him and he becomes like a quiet farmer on a quiet mm -hmm. planet which is why when they kill him florian it's like it's supposed to be like a, a representation of their impotence it's like yeah, we killed Thanos, and it changed nothing. Like, it like uh, this guy was just like a quiet farmer chilling out with a fucked up face, and mm -hmm. we killed him. We cut his goddamn like we snuck up on him in his house and cut his head off, and we felt nothing because, like, as kind of a representation of just how how badly Thanos won. Do you have well, a response? I guess that's Florian? pretty cool. Oh, okay. Well, I still think that, that Captain Marvel being in the movie didn't make any sense, though. I don't know how, how you would f how, how you would fix that on any they level. They literally called her at the end of the last movie. Okay, on, on the same note of uh, uh, getting re revenge against Thanos when he's not hurting anybody anymore, uh, they bring up, when they're talking about time travel, they, they indirectly bring up the idea of killing baby Hitler. And and Professor yes. Hulk, who I, I think we'll talk about Professor Hulk in a second. He he sort of seems oh, yeah. he's he's against the idea mm -hmm. of killing baby Thanos to prevent all of this from happening. Um, <laughs> am I the only one who uh, who thinks it's a little strange? I I think killing baby Thanos <laughs> so that he can't exterminate trillions of people. I think that's a pretty justified. I personally I would strangle baby Hitler. Am I wrong here? Would, um, any, would, um, would anybody here not kill baby Hitler? I mean, I would kill I, Baby I Hitler if sense. it worked. But I mean, in the rules of this time travel, like killing Baby Hitler doesn't work. Like Baby Hitler's brother Schittler just takes over. <laughs> like you get like in the rules of this movie, you can't just change the past. Does that even happen? I, I I honestly don't even understand the rules of this movie because they obviously changed the past by taking all this stuff and by killing Thanos. I mean, Thanos killed I don't know how many people before he got the Infinity Stones. What happened to that? Well, the way that uh, 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 bald uh, wizard lady explained it, 
uh, you it's not that you're not changing the past. It's that when you change something, you're opening up a different timeline. So mm -hmm. it, so they're creating a timeline where Thanos never existed. Uh, the main timeline, I guess, will be unaffected. But still, uh, it's, it's not so bad having a timeline where Thanos is killed as a baby and none of this happens. So why did they bring back the Infinity Stones then? I guess if because, they didn't uh, have any obligation. Well, yeah, the well, the Hulk didn't want to create six bad timelines and curse everybody from those uh, alternate realities. So they oh oh wait no, turns out you're wrong because <sighs> because Captain turns out America, I'm wrong. Yeah, Captain America traveled back in time and he's he traveled back to the same timeline. So no no inf no alternate timeline there. Well, he went back and gave all the stones and Thor's hammer back at the exact moment that they were taken away. So he yeah, so he undid changed. those alternative timelines. And then I guess back in time in the original timeline, he just sat back and didn't do anything as all the yeah, but, but as Bucky Thanos? killed Tony's parents and all this shit. He just sat there and let it happen. But but wouldn't Thanos have been dead as well? Because he he came back from the past. Well, I, I think the mistake we're making fun. is assuming that the movie actually makes sense. But uh, I yeah, think I, know, right? I think <laughs> from a critical point of view, uh, there are many time plot holes that the movie cannot hope to justify. But I don't want to focus too much my, on that. My problem I'm is fine, like everybody who dies in this movie, you could just pluck them from out of time, bring them to the <laughs> proper timeline right. and let them live out their full like life, like Black Widow, like uh, <laughs> Tony, like vision all these people you could just bring back and then de-age them which we saw happen in this fucking movie <laughs> yeah. so they're the same age and then just let them die when their time is over like i i, I hate that they opened up that possibility because it's not now it's just like oh well, i can't really be sad about black widow because if they want to use her again they can just pluck her out of time well they yeah, obviously I was, gonna do oh, that sorry. um <laughs> I, oh sorry Florian. i want to hear what you have to say well, they, they need this very rare particle, and the guy who made the particle is dead, but can they bring the guy who made the particle back? Are they going to use time travel? I guess they're going to forget about time travel altogether, though, to be honest. I guess it just doesn't fit into the universe well, too well. Because I mean, the it, way that time travel like works in this movie, problems. and I, uh, like with the whole pin particle thing, let's say pin particles exist on April 1st, 1980. You could go back to April 1st, 1980, get the, all the pin particles you want. Then go back in time one minute. Grab the ten same particles again. Go back in time <laughs> right. one minute. Grab them. So you can have an unlimited supply just by going back in time one minute every time. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you could have 80 copies of the Infinity Gauntlet with all of the stones, g given uh, the time travel rules in this movie. But Asterios, what were you going to say? Oh, I mean, you're absolutely right. And the, and the other thing is, Hank Pym is still alive. Like, he's yeah. at Tony Stark's funeral. And also now he has uh, now he has his wife who's also a good scientist. Um, it is it is kind of problematic that they left everybody with the ability for infinite time travel. <laughs> yeah. I wish I wish that they hadn't have brought Gamora back because mm -hmm. if you can bring and I get that she's time displaced Gamora right, from 2014. Right. Like I understand that, but like. The, there is a place where Gamora and Black Widow are still alive. It's called yeah. Soul World. Right. Like, the Soul Gem, like, when you get killed in the Soul Gem, your soul goes into this place called Soul World. Adam Warlock, who they introduced at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, like, he can navigate it. Um, to bring back Gamora but not bring back Black Widow is weird, and it sticks mm. out to you. Um, yeah. I, I kind of feel like they could have dodged and avoided it. Yeah, well, you open up too much back. of a Pandora's box where anything can happen now if they want to write it that way. And people can ask those questions and not really be properly rebuffed. What I want to know about this whole thing is, so in order to get the Soul Stone before Thanos gets the Soul Stone, Natasha has to be thrown off the cliff and then Clint gets it. But then when uh, Captain America comes back to give it back, <laughs> that's an entirely separate Soul Stone from the one that Thanos got. How do you give this thing back? And do you think it's awkward, Captain America and Red Skull meeting up again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also think that's weird that we didn't see that. <laughs> that's you really think that funny. That would be an interesting meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I didn't realize you would be here. This is a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Here, here's your stone back. <laughs> well, I guess he can't be killed now. <laughs> yeah. What, but what like, the do? entire thing is like essentially by changing that thing. I don't understand why Thanos can't just like come up and take that stone that they already technically got out. 
And I, I don't so know he how they can have had to kill Gamora. I think you could say that Red Skull put it back into Soul World somehow. Mm. But I'd like somebody to tell me that. Like, I, I'm I'm just the pedantic nerd who needs to be calmed <laughs> down by uh, Xena Warrior Princess today to say just a wizard did it. When, yeah. when you say something like that, a wizard did it. I don't know how they can. Wizards. Shit. Sorry, I'm having a oh, mic difficulty. You okay, Shit, monkey? My uh, my Is mic dead? my my Discord mic keeps turning itself off for some reason. Oh, but, uh, that's okay. I don't know how any of these Marvel movies can ever have stakes ever again. Now that <laughs> there's a man who just has time travel particles that I assume people can steal from him. How how is Ant Man three not going to be like? Oh, there's a problem. I guess I'll just go back in time twenty minutes and stop it. How well, can also, we ever it... have stakes ever again? If one of the stones is a time travel device already, don't you go for that one first and then use that one to help you get the other ones just in case <laughs> something goes wrong? I, it's dumb. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? What did yeah. you guys think of the scene where Hawkeye and Black Widow are trying to commit suicide before the other one does? I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I mean, if you just write that down on paper, it's hilarious. Black Widow and Hawkeye comp compete to kill themselves first. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like my favorite idea ever. Man, I think they should have yeah. just both died, though. That would have been way funnier. <laughs> I think it wow. went on too long, and the, the inherent drama to that scene kind of drained out of it because it was being played as a comedic scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I didn't mind that it was so long because that's a that's a relationship that like they established really well in Avengers one mm -hmm. like you know Black Widow has killed a lot of people yeah. and Hawkeye's like eh but you're still cool because you're trying to help now and now it's like the reverse yeah and yeah you know that was something that really wasn't touched on well in Avengers two at all Avengers two by the way I think is terrible I don't know if you guys think Avengers two is bad but I think Avengers I like it. Bad. I like. I, I rewatched all of the Avengers movies uh, before Endgame, and I think Avengers Two is much better after seeing the movies that came after it because you realize what it was doing for like the whole narrative of these series. But mm -hmm. as a standalone, when it first came out, it was very disappointing to me. But I, I like it a whole lot more now. There's a scene where Hawkeye tells Scarlet Witch, like, I am a dude with a bow and arrow running around shooting robots. <laughs> None of this shit makes sense, but when you go out there, you're a hero. And I love that scene. So. Well, I yeah, think... I uh, let a stereo go. We keep cutting him off. Oh, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I, no, I mean, just generally speaking, I thought that I thought that scene was amazing. Um, I just, uh, it's, it's just this movie did so much to develop Black Widow and. I hope they bring her back, and I hope they bring her back in an interesting way that we've never seen before. Because, like, this is the first movie where I'm like, oh, I get Black Widow now. Like, I get it. Like, she does everything out of guilt, and she feels this, like, huge sense of duty, and she has, kind of like Thor, like, she has the world of the, like, the weight of the world on her shoulders. Oh, and now she's got to die? Like, I was just learning about you. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, my favorite ones are Avengers 1 and 2 and then the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. I wasn't really a fan of Infinity War and, and Endgame. Yeah, I, I gotta say. Yeah, I, I need I, to hear more about this. All we do is, we, we've basically been sucking this movie stick. I want to hear all the reasons why you hate this movie, Florian. Well, yeah. ironically, this one is actually way different from Infinity War, and I still don't like him that much as, as much as the Avengers and the Guardians, because the Avengers and the Guardians, they were just self-contained movies that, that were just really engaging all the way through. Infinity War was just a complete mess where there was just action the entire time, and there was barely a, a moment where it wasn't just some, some new, new random superheroes <laughs> appearing and, and fighting. And then in this one, I guess it's it's got a whole different tempo, but it's still too long for it to, to have such a slow start. Guys, so I, I, guess... uh, I have a confession to make. This might be controversial. I might get kicked off of Vizikino for this one. But oh <laughs> as I was rewatching all the Avengers movies, I kind of didn't like the first Avengers, folks. And I, wow. I, I think Last it's because year. I think it's become a little bit trite. I think the stakes mm. the stakes might have seemed big back in 2012, but compared to all the other movies now, it was so like low stakes to me. And all the characters, the way that Joss Whedon wrote them, they weren't really characters. They were just like literal quipping machines and it was almost nothing but uh i really i it feels like such a shallow movie to me in retrospect and i i almost like avengers 2 better i'll, I'll put that out there 
Wow. Okay. I really love the Avengers, not because of like how it looks or anything, but just because of the writing of the characters. Yeah. So maybe when I go back to it, I'll, I'll look for that and see if I see it the same way. Yeah, I think don't, after don't Infinity War and Endgame, it's, it's a much weaker movie, really. Wow. Don't they equip as much in Avengers 2? I, I know there's the guy, the, the scene where, where the guy says shit and then he, he gets shit for it the entire time. Yeah. Which, I mean, that was which, painful. That, that's a stupid fucking line. In what world yeah. is a, a World War II veteran going to be upset about cursing? Or Are you fucking kidding me? He went through basic training. <laughs> that's all they ever do he's, is cuss. He's a Boy Scout, though. Like that, That's the yeah. entire yeah, part know. of the character. World War II veteran fighting Nazis. He can't handle the word shit. Come on. I think that was a bad <laughs> quip on Joss Whedon's part. Yeah, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> but at, oh, I the like best it. thing is, though, that they finally... They, they finally do the big question, the, the question of the AI that will one day replace us and destroy us all. And I'm glad they, they had a moment where they did that, at least, even if it just turned out to be just another one of the guys in the end. He became Vision, right? Hmm. I guess that was too bad. But why why really else did you the hate the movie, uprising. though? Why else did you hate this new movie? Well, this one, I don't know. I, f I felt it was so anticlimactic, and they just Whoa, did what? all this time... <laughs> Well, it's the most climactic movie ever made. I'm doing the past. Well, how is it though? I mean, if if in Lord of the Rings they just use time travel to to undo the the enslavement of Middle Earth, how would that <laughs> add to the stakes in any way? Yeah, I think that's just really cheap. And they could just do it as much as they want. They could just use the time travel to get infinite time travel, and then they would never have any problems. And they don't even take it seriously when they boys, travel back boys, in time. Boys. Boys, hey. all of those time travel questions fall away when Captain America calls Thor's hammer to his hands and starts using both the shield, Ooh. the hammer, to fight Thanos. Holy shit. Hell yeah. Asterios, what are your fun. thoughts on this? Um, I, uh, like, uh, what, what is it? I mean, generally speaking, Mumkey, I agree with you that maybe Avengers 1 doesn't hold up. I think it's probably just because it's been so ripped off. Yeah. Like um by by yeah, the old, like, by the Marvel movies themselves really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, and also by DC. I mean, you know, you see like Justice League is I like Justice League. Like it wasn't amazing. I didn't think it was like a work of art, but I was like this is a fun popcorn movie. And it I mean, you know, Justice League is ripping off everything from the Avengers, even Joss Whedon. I remember a yeah. long time ago when I saw I saw like Citizen Kane uh, in film school, I, yeah, I was kind of <laughs> like, this movie sucks. And then I thought, oh, wait, it does. this movie sucks because it invented movies. Yeah, it like, the reason this movie feels like tonally inconsistent is that, well, before this movie, there was no such thing as tonal consistency. Yeah. So, like, you kind of, you know, I think that Avengers is kind of like of its time. Um, like, uh, Avengers, but, but it, Asterios Kokonos believes Avengers 2012 is the next coming of Citizen Kane. <laughs> oh, oh definitely yeah I, definitely I think, this, I think this movie though like i i don't know i don't know why you'd call it anticlimactic because it has like the biggest climax in the in, in the, the history, history of, of films. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> actually like, oh, I, I yeah it also had the biggest build-up in the history of movies god could you imagine if if this was the new citizen kane and all we get from now on is just stupid quipping superheroes from from now till the end of time well god, could you imagine if that was movies from now on? i i talked to a woman who said the same thing that she felt it was anticlimactic like <laughs> she was a huge fan of the marvel movies wow. but she just felt like she just felt like she knew how everything was going to end up and the movie really didn't surprise her at all i can't even imagine I mean, what more they could have done it, like it was it was as much climactic as it was like fan service climactic mm -hmm. you you get the the i think proper character re resolutions to to iron man to to captain america you get a uh, logical progression for thor and he and he well, i don't know do you guys like thor abandoning his people after all that to go adventure across the galaxy it seems like thor okay yeah that seems fine you got hulk coming about... to terms with his uh, his hulkness uh, I mean, what more could, what, what did people expect? If Florin, what would have made this more climactic for you? Well, I mean, I don't see how this makes any, how, how this makes it any better to you. This is like they dropped the ball in like 10 years ago and now they finally picked it up again and, and you're <laughs> applauding them for it. Yeah, we, we get a, a conclusion to, to, to Iron Man now after 10, 20 years. Is that, is that really great? Yes, yeah, the end of his arc. Know. Yeah, but, and also because we've had five or six movies he's been in since then, man. But it was I still didn't like it because 
they they won the movie basically by using cheats they they just <laughs> used i mean it's as if you play a game and then you just write a cheat code that lets you beat the final boss and that's it well let me ask that's you this basically all we saw you think that time travel is cheating well yeah need i remind you the avengers uh, Scarlet Witch destroyed the stone in Vision's head, and Thanos cheated by using time travel to get it back. Could it be that they used his own cheat codes <laughs> against him, Florian? Well, but he destroyed the cheat codes, damn it. They, they should have been destroyed. Uh, not too he did bad. the world a favor too by bad. destroying the cheat codes. Now, now you can't say time work. travel's not fair when Thanos did the same shit in the last movie. I would, I would agree yeah. that... I'm, I mean, you know, time travel, I think, can be cheap in a movie, but, like, it's not always cheap. Like, like, yeah, I mean, think of what we got thanks to time travel. Like, we got a scene where, like, Thor gets to talk to his mom one last time. We Actually got a makes scene... the dark world interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Hilariously, on Boomer vs. Zoomer, I told Monkey Jones the only one of these movies I've never seen is Thor of the Dark World, and, <laughs> and Monkey said, oh, you don't need to see it. I doubt it's going to have any effect on this movie. Yeah, and they, they even brought back Natalie Portman. That's how important yeah. it was. Like, the, the worst major, Marvel movie is a major plot uh, thread in this yeah. film. Um, a major plot element of this film is a talking raccoon sticking a fucking crazy device up Natalie Portman's ass to get the red stone out of her. Which, which... Folks, I don't want to bring up too many plot holes, but I specifically remember in Thor The Dark World, the, the <laughs> most brilliant Asgardian doctors and scientists had no idea how to get the red stone out of Natalie Portman's body. But now, five <laughs> years later, this raccoon just has a device that can do it. What the fuck? What? Well, they're trying to use Asgardian magic to, to get it out, and they like it. maybe they don't have a way to do that. They can't invent a syringe? That's all he fucking had. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I mean, just really overpowered now. I guess what are you gonna say? Yeah. Well, they, well, they, well. They what I mean, <laughs> go ahead, Asterios. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, time travel also got us like an amazing scene where Tony Stark gets to meet his dad and then give his dad advice that he would then give him yeah. years later. So like, like time travel, get, like, like you know, time travel finally lets Captain America be with Peggy Carter, which is. I mean, the whole Agent Carter miniseries, like the whole first season of Agent Carter is about like unrequited love and her like trying to protect Captain America's legacy. And all these goddamn yeah. movies, it's it's like all this stuff with like Cap and Agent Carter, Cap and Agent Carter. So, so I mean, yeah, like, you know, time travel is like, yeah, it is a cheat. Like, of course it's a cheat, but um, it's like the game genie of screenwriting. But yeah. like what we got out of it was so good that I mm -hmm. didn't, Mind. I think time travel is only a cheat when it goes flawlessly. But when the villains start using the hero's time travel against them, like, like, uh, uh, uh oh, God, what's her, what's the name of Gomorrah's sister? Uh, Nebula. Nebula and Thanos are essentially Biff in this movie. Like, they're, they're the <laughs> Biff of, of Back to the Future, too, because the, they, oh, they find the time machine and they use it to their advantage to change the future. And I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it interesting. And also, we have, I guess now, canonically, Loki has escaped with the Tesseract because they never fixed that. So no, they have to have fixed it. I mean, how they can they can say that that Loki uh, was able to transport into their universe as it is, but if they go back and replace that stone, he never escapes with the the Tesseract. But they're replacing it back in the seventies. Oh, oh my God! You're shit, right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> But then, well, it, but, but, but then again, the wait, 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 they don't need to go. I mean, they don't need to go back into the seventies if they don't need to go to the. The, the whole idea was that they? He, they had to return the stones exactly where they got them from, from and they got it from the seventies. Yeah, but, 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 I think they might have fucked themselves because they uh -huh. never fix Loki escaping with the Tesseract in two thousand twelve. But then in two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. A uh, fat Thor and Rocket Raccoon sneak by Loki's jail cell that he's in. What the fuck? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, well, that's How a does it all that's work? Branched reality, though. Is it? No, it isn't. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Every reality has to behave like the other changed realities are not being changed. Otherwise, we would have seen massive changes in those other realities. Dude, Captain America. How what? do you explain Captain America being old then? 
No, that is still part of that. Like he was always old Captain America, essentially. Like the the future version of Captain America will how always would, have always traveled have back. That? He was Doesn't always Peggy sense. Carter's husband. According to this movie, he was always Peggy Carter's husband. Yeah, but he still used time travel to change the past. Yeah. And you said you can't do that. Wait, I, I, wait, so you're saying... No, no, he he has always done that. Like, that that was always done. So, so what you're saying is in The Winter Soldier, when mm -hmm. Cap goes to see... Uh, Peggy Carter, and she's like an old yep. woman who's about to die. Yep. She knows the whole time that yes. Captain America's. Yes. I don't think that. I don't think that can be true. Nope. That, that's what that, they're. That actually here. would be funny though, because she. You would. You would think after eighty years of marriage, time. somebody would notice that she's married to Steve Rogers. There's no. Well, fucking she doesn't have to hide out. Yeah, he but she pretends, she pretends it. She pretends she doesn't know who this is. I mean, she knows somebody the, in the chat. The old one. Oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Mysterio. Um, Somebody in the chat wrote, Captain America lived his life in an alternate timeline, and when he got old, he traveled back in his main timeline. No. That's what I assume. Yeah, that would make way too, more sense. Because if you can't change the like past, it. I mean, that's just what I – like, honestly, that's – that is the – that is what I walked out of there thinking, like – like he had a, he lived a full life with a Peggy Carter, and then the moment he left that universe, he returned to the Prime universe, and you know, he probably waited till she died, and then like, and then was like, I'm out, and then just bailed. Well, th that would have to be it, because as a Sorceress Supreme explained, once you change something, it makes a whole different timeline immediately. Oh, so basically, he did stop 9/11 in that timeline, then. <laughs> Maybe he could have. I don't. I don't think that's that's what's implied. Then <laughs> it would oh, have no. to be because he changed the past, so it made a different timeline. How how is he changing the past though? That, that's that's my question. Because as he's far we know Peggy, that Peggy Carter, we know that Peggy had a husband, but we never know what her who her husband was. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure so it wasn't. I Peggy. assume it was Jarvis. <laughs> like, Jarvis, um, like like because in the, the in the agent. In the Agent Carter miniseries, like, her and Jarvis team up. And it's really fun, because, like, Jarvis is, like, a total wimp and, like, can't fight or do anything. And, like, she's always, like, rescuing Jarvis and, like, J Jarvis is always getting, like, damseled and shit. But, um, but, but the thing is, like, Jarvis is really brave and really cares. He's kind of like, what if Steve Rogers never got the serum? He would still be, like, a weak kind of pussy, but, you know, with heart. So mm -hmm. I assume she married Jarvis. Well, there was this other person, Phil, uh, William Sousa or whatever, the dude who had the uh, crutches. Do you remember him from the oh, Agent Carter yeah. series? She had more guy. of a relationship with him than than with Jarvis. That guy was such a beta, though. I hope she didn't end up with him. <laughs> <laughs> he really was. Because Jarvis is like hot and British. Jarvis yeah. knows Tony Stark's dad. Jarvis is gay, though. Whoa. Oh, that's right. Ugh, sorry. Um, maybe he'll hook <laughs> up with Joe again. Russo's character. <laughs> anyway, let's. Hey, I want to shift if... gears and ask. Uh, we talk about cheat codes within uh, storytelling with time travel. Let's talk about cheat codes in character development. Did you guys like yeah. that the Hulk's most important character de uh, developing moments happened off screen? How do you guys feel about that? Well, it's part of the five years later thing, so I think that's kind of... Isn't that kind of cheap, though? We have five movies that feature the Hulk and Banner sort of conflicting their uh, existences together, and then we just sort of have a movie where they've already fixed it off camera and we never really see them do it. Well, I think that's the same with Tony Stark, where Tony Stark has settled down, has a kid, and is perfectly happy with his life, but now he has to risk everything that he, he, he has gotten in order to save everyone. Yeah. What do you guys think? Um, I, I just thought it was, I thought it was great for the, just the visual gag. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, that's another, that's like another great thing from the comics. Like two things for the comics that we haven't talked about yet are one, like there are versions of the Hulk where he's both like, I think Joe, one of them is named like Joe fix it, which is like a version of the Hulk that is as smart as banner. Um, so, you know, I just, I thought it was neat that like we see Hulk finally at peace with himself. I thought that was cool. And the other thing is um, Old Man Cap is also a Marvel Comics character. Like, Old Man Cap eventually becomes the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, like, leads New Avengers as just, like, a cranky old man who tells <laughs> aliens to get off his lawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was just like, yeah, oh, there's all this fuck. It, like, this movie was continuity porn. Right. And, and, like, as a huge nerd, 
But like Florian, maybe the reason I liked it a lot more as you is because I just kept going like, I get this, I saw this, I know what this mm-hmm. comic is from, like like a child would when they recognize mm-hmm. colors or shapes. Well, and, wow, uh, that's, that's serious, right. have you ever read House of M? Yeah, like I didn't like yeah. House of M. Oh, you didn't like it? Well, I, I just like those like alternate reality type stories of like when this huge cataclysm thing happens and then how the characters react to that and then change and different things come of that. So like fat thor hulk like <laughs> getting getting okay with each other uh tony being able to move past everything and then like uh cap is kind of a therapist for everyone like I, I like seeing like those alternate versions of the what they could do without being superheroes yeah i also loved how cap kept going like we've all got to move on and we've all yeah. got to we've all got to pick ourselves up and change and he's just lying through his gut God damn team. He can't move on from Peggy Carter. He goes back in time with a magic with magic particle to fuck the girl he could never get over. Like it's the ultimate the incel dream. Fall- yeah, I mean he falls in love with her right out of high school, and he's like he like fixates on her forever. It's like the only girl he could never have. And he he rips the universe apart and creates a branching timeline to fuck. Okay, the he did not. He okay, okay, guys, he did not create a branching timeline. Oh because no, he was sitting on that bench. No, he went back old to that Cap timeline. Was... What? A old Cap no, no, went no, back to that timeline. Waiting... Possibly. No, if he did, then they were waiting for him to appear at that place, uh, the transport pad or whatever. But since he didn't go back there, he didn't use like the time traveling stuff to get back. He sat and lived that life with Peggy and well, then was it's in a that huge, timeline then the whole time. Then it's a huge 22 movie long plot hole if he's in that timeline as himself the whole time. I don't think it is. How, how the <laughs> fuck you spend 60 years of your life hidden and nobody knows you exist? I don't know. It's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way you're married to Peggy Carter, but you never go grocery shopping with her. You hide in your uh, house for 60 years with your fucking windows covered. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He did it for no! love. No. <laughs> That's wow. fucking ridiculous. <laughs> you can't just put on a ball cap and and uh, and and sunglasses and then be perfect disguised <laughs> like in all these other movies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be speaking of plot holes, and somebody's making a lot of noise. I think it's a stereo. Sorry, uh, I'll put myself on mute for a sec. Sorry. I'm... Okay. Uh, the biggest plot hole of all, and I, I don't think anybody else has brought this up. In the scene where Hulk dabs, folks, Hulk dabs for the kids, and the kids want an autograph. And the whole joke of the scene is Ant Man's like, oh, I'm a superhero too. Do you want my autograph? And the kids are like, no, I don't. How the fuck? Did those kids not want Captain America's autograph? He's right the fuck there! Are you kidding me? Well, something in those five years changed how important Hulk was, obviously. The kids want Hulk's autograph and not Captain America, not Black Widow. What the... Captain America's had (laughs) trading cards about him for 30 years now. These kids, they moved on. They want dabbing Hulk. They they don't want the greatest hero in the history of their world to to take a picture, to have an autograph. It's ridiculous, folks. Literally unwatchable, zero out of ten garbage movie. (laughs) I didn't see Hulk dab. I didn't what? Oh my God. Yeah, I missed it. Oh I my God. Fortnite. I saw Thor playing Fortnite. Oh, when, when the kids want Hulk's autograph, he fucking dabbed. It was hilarious. How wow. many It's okay. not a proper dab because he's facing his, like his head is pointing in the same direction that his hands are. In order to dab, you'd have to look away, but it's pretty close. It's a, it, it's good for the camera. I think that the Hulk was trying to do like a half dab so that his face could still be visible in frame, but mm-hmm. it wasn't a complete dab. Well, I think it's like when your your dad wants to seem like he's cool, so he tries to dab to fit in with his kids, but the Hulk, of course, is awkward Bruce Banner, doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, so maybe he thought that was a, a genuine dab. That's true. I mean, like, like you know, he's he's super brilliant, but we also know he's kind of socially awkward. Yeah, very um, much. Regardless mm-hmm. of its dab status, I did enjoy that the Hulk at least made the attempt to do a proper dab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty um, in character. Uh, do you guys have any other thoughts on the Hulk in this movie? Oh, man, I have no idea how to feel about him. I guess it's weird that they, they skipped this, but I'm also fucking tired of, of Hulk just being these two characters, and I guess it's good that he's finally one character, so that's cool. I think it's I interesting wonder... that it's set up that the Hulk and Bruce Banner are two separate entities that have sort of fused together to be one perfect being, mm-hmm. but 
when Sorceress Supreme knocks his soul out of his body, the soul is just Bruce Banner. Banner. Yeah. Does that imply mm-hmm. that the Hulk does not have a soul or that the true uh, Hulk Bruce Banner is Bruce Banner himself? What do you guys think of that? The Hulk is just an extrapolation of the gamma radiation that's that's in him uh, that he transforms into this thing. Like, he doesn't transform back into Hulk ever. I think the the arrangement he's made is essentially to be half Hulk, half Banner. That has all of the requisite. But I think he could go back to being Banner. If so he his wanted true to. self is still Bruce Banner completely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but I think it's essentially like Hulk probably gets angry when Hulk not out. Uh, so <laughs> the compromise is to have them both kind of be. Yeah. Oh, that's why he's always angry. Damn. Well, maybe Hulk is just his body now and he's just a soul. I don't know. Maybe this is the way it works. Uh, F- Florian, I don't mean this like I'm not trying to like, put you on the spot. It, like, are you just not a huge fan of superhero movies, like, in general? Like, like, are there, are there like, maybe only a couple that you kind of like? Well, I like the Avengers a lot. No, actually, I watch every every superhero movie. I, I actually do enjoy them, but I think that the, the cinematic universe has never really lived up to the animated universe. The, there's so many good Batman movies out there that the, the Avengers stuff just doesn't compare in my mind, I guess. It's just too bad just all human no. actors i don't relate to that i want to see animated mm-hmm. stuff <laughs> that's no fair. no i no i i totally hear you um i mean i think that like i don't know if anything in any of these marvel movies is as good as the stuff in the dark knight trilogy like i think the dark knight trilogy is kind of this like once in a lifetime confluence of like high oh, wow. art and superhero shit um mm, I, I think I, they could have stuck the landing a little better <laughs> yeah oh yeah, I mean, I don't think those movies are perfect. It's just I think the highs are so high. Like I remember watching the Dark Knight Rises, and you know, all of a sudden we're in like, like a Gotham city that's been taken over by Bane, and there's a bomb driving around in the back of a garbage truck. And I remember, th- and like, and the federal government doesn't want to let people go over a bridge. And I'm watching this. I'm like, what the fuck? They send that? every this single cop in the city into the sewers. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I just. It was just. A, insane you know yeah. um but I, I i like these marvel movies just because i don't enjoy going out to see like dark depressing shit like i'm not like life is super depressing so i like going to a movie and just seeing friends joke around and fool around with magic time crystals <laughs> i just want to see friends joke around say the same things they said the last two movies and you know <laughs> fight each other i want to make wow. some uh predictions i want us all to predict where we see uh see the mcu going next my prediction for guardians of the galaxy three folks three i have two predictions for one we're gonna get some sort of montage of thor and star lord exercising (laughs) together so then thor is no longer fat thor prediction number two the plot of the film is uh like you said uh asterios or maybe it was he rich uh there's that uh adam something guy adam range wait adam who Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's DC. Um, Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. He, if, if, yeah. if he can navigate the soul world, I think the plot will be Star-Lord trying to get his Gamora back because they did tease mm-hmm. at the end of Guardians 2, Adam Warlock coming soon. So if that's really what he can do, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was the plot of the third movie. Yeah, I oh. think that'll happen. I think Thor should just become fatter Thor. I think he should just become <laughs> as round it. as possible. He should become like Choji and Naruto, and his all his powers are based <laughs> on being fat. It would be the best thing ever. Human boulder, and he just rolls into people. <laughs> um, I think they have to be small scale again. I think Marvel has to start building things back up rather than like keeping on with a huge Avengers stakes every two or three movies type thing. So like really invest in this new team like dr strange black panther spider-man uh and captain marvel and kind of like build a new team out of those kind of core characters now lots of great characters in there too yeah 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 mysterious do you have any predictions for future films um hmm. well i mean we're definitely going to see a black panther 2 that movie made so much goddamn money and um and also when Black Panther showed up, he got like the loudest cheers out of anybody in the wow. theater. Um, wow! I mean, you know, I was seeing it in New York City, like, uh, 
So I imagine that we're going to send Black Panther to space Whoa. in the next movie. Um, what else? Are, what else is going to happen? I think um, Ant Man is going to put together like a small team of Avengers to do some sort of like microverse heist. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to kind of be it's going to be like uh, like um, the Fast and the Furious only with. Uh, only with, like maybe he'll get Loki. I assume he's gonna find some kind of like grayer characters in the Marvel wow. universe to like go on some sort of microverse time heist, uh, a microverse uh, particle heist, and then finally, um, after after we see the new Spider-Man movie, whatever the next movie is is gonna introduce mutants because mm. they have to start doing that soon. Because mm-hmm. now they have the X-Men because mm-hmm. they bought Fox. And the Fantastic Four, exactly. Oh, no. Like Marvel, Marvel has been bending over backwards to make Inhumans their mutants, and it's just yeah. not the same. The no, Inhumans no. are they're shittier. I'm sorry, <laughs> the Inhumans are shittier than the mutants. Fucking magic fart cloud that makes Inhumans. Fuck all that shit. Yeah, and they they get caught up in like a chrysalis of this, and it's the Terrigen crystals. It's just like oh. yeah. Speaking it's of the cool. speaking of the new Spider-Man movie, here's something really interesting to me is that all the characters who got snapped are the same age they were, but now it's the year 2023. So all of a, at least half of Peter's class at school is now five years older than him. They've all graduated. I think it's interesting that we see, I guess in the in the trailer for the new Spider-Man, all of his closest friends evidently also yeah. got snapped. Uh, it seems very right. coincidental. But I, I'm curious how they'll they will deal with this because surely it'll be brought up and we'll have some world building in the new Spider-Man of what it's like being the same age when the rest of the world is aged five years around you. I hope they don't ignore that. I really hope that they do something with that. They have to. I think that are soon to come, but I don't know. I don't know that they will. I'm, I. I, I hope, but it, I mean, it's so bizarre. Like half of his class is five years older. Like they're they're at college now. Uh, it's I don't know. It's it's a weird scenario. How does the world change? If we thought half of people disappearing was an uh, a, a apocalyptic moment, what's it like when those people reappear as they were five years later? And th- when they did the when Tony did his snap. It only fixed those who were snapped. What about yeah. uh, when Nick Fury sees a helicopter crash? Probably a lot of right. people died from that. I, they didn't bring back anybody, those people. All the people who committed who suicide. Yeah. All yeah, the suicides. I, I, like, not, yeah. The world is, is not really that fixed. It's still kind of horrible. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't wait for them to have this conflict that Thanos was worrying about how there's too many people and too few resources and now all the people are back and the resource production is not kept up and now they're going to have a, an amazing war. Maybe that'll be the next thing. I, guess I think things would cool. be even worse than this movie is letting <laughs> on because if half the entire population appears and then like geopolitical, like you'd have to assume that there are some countries of people that most of the people in that country disappear. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure it's it's more fair than that. I don't think it it would do anything like that. But like the snap doesn't go country by country and say half here, half <laughs> here, half here. It like the, the laws of like uh, uh of, of probability true random say that yeah, of truly randomness means that there's one country where nobody got snapped and there's one country where everybody well, got. Well, I don't know if it's that extreme. But one thing, that kind of thing. A, I've seen a lot of fuckers on Reddit saying really five years later Fortnite is still relevant that's absurd and i'm thinking <laughs> half the population was just fucking exterminated do you think mm-hmm. humanity's main concern for those five years is making new video games what the fuck yeah. are you what of course they're playing <laughs> Fortnite. no squid invaders has not come out because florian was fucking snapped <laughs> oh, no. what what else yeah. are they gonna you think they're gonna make new games in the wake of everybody oh. being dead if anything, they're all going to play Fortnite because it gives them nostalgia feels for a time before the snap. <laughs> sure. Is Thanos? Is Fortnite Thanos? Yeah, is I think Thanos Korg has a lot of universe, nostalgia. Is Thanos in the Marvel Universe version of Fortnite? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. Um, I, I do have a another. I, I don't want to go too off track of what we were just saying, but I want to ask because uh, I, I sort of had a problem with it. Thanos was. In Infinity War, the most compelling villain, if not character, we've seen thus far. I feel like in the second half, when we go to 2014 Thanos, I feel like they've really dumbed down his character a lot. He doesn't feel as um, 
It doesn't feel as complex or deep, and I also find it absurd that 2014 Thanos with no gauntlet is stronger than gauntlet Thanos. Did you guys, uh, did you guys pick up on that? Did, did past Thanos seem a little too powerful compared to full gauntlet Thanos? Well, I don't know if he used the gauntlet much in the fights. I think that his power was his own. He just used the gauntlet for specific magic every once in a while. Well, the way I see it, Thanos and Iron Man fought one-on-one, -on -one, and Thanos had the, the glove that gives him infinite power. And Iron Man, one-on-one, -on -one managed to scratch him and make him bleed. But then we have Thor with two of the most powerful weapons in history, uh, Captain America with his shield, and Iron Man again. And all three of them are, like, wiped out almost immediately by Thanos. Well, he still had his army as well. Did he use them? No, just uh, just Thanos himself was able to take down those three when, in the previous film, Iron Man went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos when he was much more powerful. I, I feel like they just power-creeped him retroactively, very strangely. I, I, I feel like well, 2014 Thanos was too strong. Ironically, they, they also power-creeped... Uh, Captain Marvel that much, but then he kicks her ass easy enough, so I guess that was at least funny, that, that she wasn't as strong as Thanos. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I guess yeah, he blew I, up I, his whole ship in one go, but then she couldn't face the man himself. I mean, there's a parallel there between uh, Captain Marvel and Thanos and Superman and Darkseid. And, like, Thanos and Darkseid are both purple space monster rulers <laughs> of the universe. Because they were both created by the same guy. Uh, Erich, who created... Was that uh, Ditko? Kirby? Oh, wait, Kirby, yeah, Ditko. Yeah. I, I forget if it was Ditko or Kirby that created both of them. Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta have... There has to be some... There has to be a villain stronger than your strongest hero. And, mm -hmm. and so, like, when Thanos punched away Captain Marvel without the gauntlet, I was like, oh, good. Like, because it's, you know... They've got to like establish the rules of this universe. I, I like. I thought that was pretty well done. I think it's just wear and tear. I think uh, Thanos and in Infinity War was essentially fighting all of the Avengers throughout the entire movie, so he's just going to not be as strong. And Thanos for 2014 is just walking in from being pretty well rested and pretty. Well, yeah, but he has the uh, Infinity Gauntlet with the Power Stone and all that shit. I would expect that to be the most powerful incarnation of the character. Yeah, but this Thanos isn't really ripping moons apart or anything in this movie. Yeah, but he, he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the main three heroes and doesn't even get a scratch on him. Well, he did that yeah. before as well. He he, he fought he Sora and, and Hulk in the, in the same... Yeah. In the no, starting but, scene. But Sto Stormbreaker is, was made literally to be a Thanos-killing weapon. And it would have killed Thanos in one hit if he would have aimed a little bit higher. But now, Stormbreaker is almost completely useless in this fight. And, and Thor is not going one-on-one. -on -one. He has two other powerful guys with him. I don't get it. Why was Stormbreaker so ineffective at killing Thanos this time? All right, this is just comic book shit. This is just, <laughs> you want to have a fun battle at that time so the character can do well, he only really got in with Stormbreaker because Thanos was distracted. I guess this time he, he wasn't distracted, that's all. Uh, I mean, I, I, I remember he... Thanos... Thor throws Stormbreaker. Thanos uses the full power of the gauntlet to try to push it away, and he fails. Stormbreaker is so much stronger that it goes and hits Thanos anyway. In this movie, yeah. he doesn't have anything. He's, like, blocking it with a normal-ass sword. Look, man. It's a fucking hmm. movie. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the typical argument when you're like, "Oh yeah, you got me." <laughs> right. Well, no, I mean, you're you're abs you're absolutely right. Like in like in comic books as well, like a character's power will fluctuate depending on the drama. Like yeah. when like when the when the supervillain has to be weak, he's weak, and when he has to be all powerful, he's all powerful. It's like uh, like like. I mean, maybe we can say that in the Marvel universe, someone's power level is connected to the amount of dramatic tension and irony it would create. And there's, <laughs> yeah. like, there's like a particle called like screen radium that like mm. they all depend on. Uh, and, and, you know, Tony Stark ran out of screen playium and died. Well, at the end. you could also say that maybe Thanos with the infinity gauntlet knows that he has like ultimate unlimited power. So he's not as like, he, he's kind of not, <laughs> he's not at his full power for himself. He's just using the gauntlet more than he's using his own power essentially what did you think of his his newfound philosophy after seeing the failure of the snap where he said okay i'm going to eliminate the entire universe and start a new one from scratch did you guys think that was uh in in line with his character i love that yeah man i, 
I wish that would have been the ending where he just snaps his fingers and then the screen goes black because he's wiped out the whole universe. That would have been awesome. (laughs) That would have been the best ending ever. Not even any credits because everybody's just gone. There's nobody to edit the movie anymore. Maybe Mm -hmm. the credits fade away. (laughs) That'd be fucking hilarious. That was kind of like a flaw for me, but also a character building moment. Like, I mean, after the first movie, everybody said, hey, instead of killing everyone... Instead of killing half of people, why don't you use this magic glove to double the resources of the universe? Mm -hmm. Like, that was kind of like the meme response. And unfortunately, like, that meme response is is now valid because it's like, wait, this glove can destroy the universe, create a new universe where no one knows about the old. It's like, (laughs) then why are you killing half of people just to be Uh a dick? But it's also... Oh, sorry. Well, so what did you say? I imagine the, the magic of the Infinity Glove is whatever you're thinking in your brain, when you snap, that becomes reality, unless you're trying to bring back somebody who died in exchange for the Soul Stone. So Tony Stark, <laughs> with his one snap, just wishes away all of the bad guys. There, Man, if you're a real hero, there's so many better things you could have done for humanity with your with your one snap. Just, I, I, mm-hmm. just So many... Uh, potential uh, life-altering things to, f- to just fix the world for everybody. If Tony didn't uh, uh, reverse the effects of global warming, then he is the tr- villain of this entire <laughs> Yeah, franchise. like, like okay, I want to snap away all of Thanos' people and also uh, double the resources. <laughs> but no. <laughs> well, he already died just from doing that, so I don't think he had the power to do anything more than that. It sounds like you can just have as many witches as you want. <laughs> Well, just, why would he die then? Just plug he it all into one snap. Not dead. Yeah, it sounds like it's like based on your thought. Like essentially, if you think, I want all of his army to be destroyed, that's what's going to happen. Why didn't he you think? Say, um, I I wish I was strong enough to snap this eighty times. <laughs> it's like when you get the magic genie, your oh first wish God. has to be for more wishes. Why didn't Tony it's do for that? For unlimited life. Yeah. yeah. I wish I was immortal. <laughs> snap. I wish Thanos was gone. Snap. I wish there were more resources. Snap. Easy. <laughs> what an idiot. Now, now we're really cheating. Yeah. Hell that, yeah. That is no. I, I that is absolutely brilliant, monkey. He should have wished for a gamma body. Like, mm-hmm. he should have wished to become Hulk strong, because then he would have, or like, du- he should have been like, I want to be as strong as two Hulks. Because then he could have <laughs> snapped that glove so many times, it would be, he'd be like a, I don't know, who's someone that snaps a lot? Like the, like the guy, like, <laughs> like, uh, I don't know, is there like uh, a Scatman John. <laughs> yeah, like he could have been like, he snapped it so much, he would have been Scatman Carruthers Stark over here. Sure. That's brilliant, Monkey. Or like, That's really goddamn smart. He could have snapped and uh, and wished that there were more uh, female-led superhero movies so that I wouldn't feel like that one scene was shoehorned in. <laughs> exactly. And he would give you your greatest wish for a girl power scene. <laughs> for a girl power scene. A truly egalitarian uh, cinematic universe. True. No, no, he should have wished for only female superheroes. <laughs> That's he true diversity. Wished... Yes. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say that, like, just, you know, maybe this is just an obvious thing that we don't need to say, but the, like, you know, in Iron Man 1, like, he only cares about himself. I mean, yeah, like, like he uses that scientist help to, to, like, get that cool suit of armor, but he still, like, kind of only cares about himself. And then at the end of the movie, like, he doesn't... At the end of this, like, he does not care about himself, and he only cares about everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just a perfect arc. Yeah. And it even ends with him saying, I am Iron Man. Oh, Mm -hmm. that's another thing I wanted to say. So, like, in this movie, there are two lines that out of worse actors would have landed like a thud. Avengers Assemble. Oh, I wanted to guess one I am Iron Man. Oh, okay. Wait, my, my, my guess would have been you were going to say Hail Hydra, which was my favorite line nah. in the movie. No, that was delivered perfectly. That, yeah, was, that was amazing great. when he said Hail Hydra. Yeah. That was that was fan fucking that that was like maybe that's the funniest joke. Is that like the funniest joke in the entire MCU? I didn't uh, even see it as a worst. joke. I saw it as like the perfectly logical, awesome thing for him to do in that situation. I mean, yeah, but I think that's why it functions so well as a joke. Yeah. It's like, it's, I, you, you know, it's the perfect way out of this thing. And then it's also like fucking hilarious. <laughs> Captain America is high. And, and like, think about 
think about like what that puts in the mind of all those guys where they're like, oh shit, Captain <laughs> how deep yeah. does this thing go? Wow. Yeah. We got really literally cool. everyone. <laughs> yeah. And that was probably yeah. my favorite moment in the movie. Yeah, but but the but what I was gonna say is like when you compare like Chris Evans saying Avengers Assemble or or Robert Downey Jr. saying I am Iron Man to most of the dialogue in uh, Watchmen. <laughs> mm, right, you're gonna right. make Florian kind of turn like, into wow, a Hulk. A good actor can <laughs> save a bad line. A good actor can save like a thud of a line. Uh, speaking Yo, that of that moment t- when he says Avengers Assemble, a lot of people have said. This movie's a bit of a tearjerker. I want to know from the panel. Did any scene or any moment make you tear up? I will admit, folks, I was in awe of the spectacle of when the portals open and every single hero yeah. ever comes out. Uh, I did tear up a bit. I was like, wow, this is just fucking amazing. <laughs> did anybody else tear up in the movie? I didn't, but only because, again, a bunch of assholes who listen to Boomer versus zoomer spoiled black widow's death for me oh, no. and they also spoiled oh, no. iron man's death i know i would have cried both of those times mm. i'm sure of it i'm positive i would have cried at both of those moments had i not seen them coming or had right. someone not told me they were coming all right guys but, I, so... but everyone was already saying "Ooh, iron man or or tony stark did well, hey, i want to hear why guy. Everidge cried and, and i think i know why he did I am a big softy, and I will cry at the drop of a hat. Um, so, guys, I was ready. I did not cry a single time. Oh, wow. Uh, I got I got emotional when Tony was talking to his dad. Yeah. Uh, but n- not not a tear. Wow. Nothing. I'm the only pansy on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Cry, baby. I must be. <laughs> but I didn't cry out of sadness. I cried out of awe. I think that makes me a stronger man than all of you. <laughs> Oh, no. I think that's how the rules work. A man uh, who can express his emotions. It's not, now, this is a three-hour movie. We've been going for about two hours. So mm-hmm. we're covering literally everything. Even some might say may, maybe we covered 20-second moments uh, for 15 minutes too long. Some might say that. So <laughs> my question to you guys is, do you have uh, any other moments or any other things you want to talk about? Before we wrap this up and say goodbye to Erich seemingly mm. forever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> let Sterios go. Oh, oh no, Florian, go ahead. No, 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 Florian, I want to hear from you. Oh yes, Eric has finally sacrificed himself to bring me back, the Spider Man. He's the Tony Stark. I'm wow. gonna, I'm gonna finally make him proud and 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 take over his role in in the Is It Kino podcast. It'll be. It'll be lovely. I mean, ideally, sure. this podcast will end with Erid saying, uh, "Mr. Florian, oh, no. I don't feel so good." <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought it would be, good. "I am Erich." I'd say, "I am." E- <laughs> That'd be it. Okay, Asterios, what were you saying? <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, the, it, it's it's like now that Erich is leaving, like I, you know, I think this might be the perfect time for me to kind of put my candidacy forward. Like, Whoa. you know, I think if, if anything, I've shown like I'm a bigger liberal cuck. Like, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm willing oh, to go no. for the jugular in a way that Erich is just not like, you know, I'm yeah. throwing around ad hominem attacks like crazy. Like, <laughs> you know, if you're looking for an Erich too, I'm your guy. I mean, as long as this guy's out the door, is if the door's still open, I want in. I don't know. My, my brother Patchy is in the running. Do you think you can compete with my own? You think you can compete with nepotism <laughs> in the stereos? Uh, Trump did hire his daughter and son-in-law. <laughs> I, I am the most Trumpian podcast host there is, so good luck. Of course you are. Oh, uh, you got to let him in, in one of the Irish tryouts, but only one. Yeah. This is your last chance. <laughs> you better not rant on about a, a, an insignificant moment for half an hour, Mr. Asterios. Well, I, don't, I didn't have the, the chat open during uh, the podcast really at all. So I, that whole time, the, the chat might have been against me and supporting Asterios. I have no idea. I don't know. Nobody maybe. was in favor of Asterius in that moment. <laughs> what? Everybody loves me. I'm America's cutest cutie. Yeah. <laughs> You're insane. Does anybody have any final no. thoughts on the film? Well, I do want to mention the Stanley cameo in this movie is a DH oh. Stanley. Oh, I thought it was the worst one yet. What? I, I thought like it was such notes. a wasted opportunity. I know they didn't know he was going to die, but Captain Marvel should not have had a better Stanley uh, goodbye than the biggest Marvel movie ever made. But the the credits I, with Stan Lee at the start. Yeah, I I think that like they should have saved that for this movie. I, I think it was wasted on <laughs> Captain Marvel, and this movie didn't even have a credit saying like for Stan Lee like right at the end. 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like they really dropped the ball <laughs> on uh, on Stan Lee here. What a waste. Yeah. What were you saying to Stereos? Oh, I like the Nuff said bumper sticker. Mm. I mean, I like I, this was not better. Th- I mean, but there is no better Stanley cameo than the one in Captain Marvel. Like, like, th- like that's the that's the best one. Um, I yeah. I mean, you know, it is kind of poetic to like send him out in his youth in his prime, like in a cool car with cool babes, like looking awesome. Like that Tell is the military to go good. fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's a pretty. That is what Stan like Stan Lee is like the yeah. he was so goddamn liberal. He was like a 60s but but again, like all liberals, he's he's liberal until it's time to pull out your wallet yeah. and then mm-hmm. he won't pay you what you're worth. He'll steal right. your intellectual property rights. I just I, I think have- these these movies aren't shy about breaking the fourth wall with these Stan Lee cameos. And a lot of people I read online were wondering if there even was one because he was sort of in a, in like a, a fake mustache and he was, a, you know, it was like a three second shot. I really feel like there should have been some big grandiose final Stan Lee cameo in this movie. It seemed really lame to me the way they did it. What? He gets the Infinity Gauntlet and well, snaps no, but like, everybody back into think, existence? Think about the Spider-Man trilogy. His cameo in Spider-Man 3, I think, is the best one. And I think they should add something more akin to that. Wait, what was that again? They basically Spider-Man stopped Man 3. the movie. In no, they basically stopped the movie so that Stanley can restate to Peter Parker with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, I think that's I great. Think that's that's oh. too much. That's too much to me. I don't think so. I think that's I think, like breaking the fourth wall. I, I think that would have been very appropriate for his final film in the but, greatest <laughs> um, monument to his life work. But it doesn't work to me because it's like in the context of the movie, that's some random guy stopping Peter on the street and saying that to him. And that would mean nothing. Well, yeah, Peter. but we as an audience know it's breaking the fourth wall, putting Stanley in there anyway. So why not just keep the wall broken? Oh, I don't like that. Well, I guess I, I, saw- I respect a dead man more than you, we rich. <laughs> I like his Spider Verse cameo better, where he's passing on this costume to to the new kid. Well, they they should have done something where they go into alternative realities, and then there's all kinds of crazy ones, and one of them is just Stan Lee everywhere. That would have been the best. <laughs> well, it's it's revealed in Guardians too that Stan Lee is a watcher who, and like every yeah. cameo of his is like this uh, this magical being just watching Earth. They could have at That's least the like, resolved that in some way, but like, so his final, his, what we assume is his final ever cameo is just him as some like seventies guy who hates war, whatever. I think the I Guardians mean, Galaxy Two one is best. Sorry. Oh no, the Guardians of Galaxy Two one is really good. That's yeah. good. The Captain Marvel one's good. Yeah. Yeah. I. I um. I mean, it is sad. But uh, but at the same time, you know, Stanley did like this is how this like you want someone to go out in their prime, and that's kind of how he went out, like looking in his prime, be it you know giving the finger to the to authority, like that's <laughs> that's Stanley in a nutshell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair. Smiling Stanley. So I guess uh, the last thing we have to discuss is. Is it Kino, folks? Let's go around the horn. Is oh, Avengers is... Endgame Kino, Florian? I want you to start. Well, I mean, I guess it's exactly as much Kino as Infinity War. I guess. So. I, I actually tend to disagree. I think Infinity War was a much better film, but I think wow. Endgame Endgame serves as a good uh, uh, final chapter to a twenty-two movie series. But I think as just a not even standalone film, but as a movie itself, I think Infinity War is almost flawless compared to any of the other ones. So how can this not be anticlimactic if the other one was better than this? Oh, I mean, uh, Empire Strikes Back is better than Return of the Jedi. But it doesn't is mean... Is it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I get... it yeah absolutely you're right, is. It is. Yeah. I forgot for a second. Oh, yeah, it's the one with the Evox. God damn it. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't <laughs> say uh, Endgame is exactly like a Return of the Jedi, also because I haven't <laughs> seen it. But uh, no, no. I-, I think... Uh, I just think Infinity War is such a flawless movie. Um, uh, I I don't think that Infinity War is a flawless movie. Uh, upon rewatching it, I'd say that the best parts of that movie are Thanos, and the rest of that movie isn't great, especially the way it's filmed. Are you describing uh, the Dark of... Knight with the Joker? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like the very the Earth parts of Infinity War are very drab looking, and like 
once those jokes are kind of old, uh, it doesn't work as well, I don't think. So I'd say all the Thanos stuff is great. A lot of the Thor stuff is probably pretty good. Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy. But a lot of that movie, I'm just kind of like over. I'm just kind of bored with. Mm. Um, and I think Avengers Endgame has enough really deep emotional stuff to really make me think that it's it's probably going to be better than Infinity War. Infinity War has a great Thanos stuff, and then that snap moment is, is awesome. Well, and j- just in terms of uh, just great fight scenes the best fight scene in any of these movies is them fighting uh thanos on titan when he's throwing moons at them and stuff this movie Mm -hmm. didn't have as creative of fight scenes it it instead went for more of a splash page of here's two giant armies fighting and personally that doesn't really do a whole lot for me in terms Mm -hmm. of like actual spectacle i liked the more grounded one guy against six heroes and he's fucking using meteor mash and shit on them but after a certain point, it just becomes like CGI bullshit. Yeah, this which is the this problem movie, with everything. Yeah, this movie, in that final act, kind of gave me vibes of Ready Player One, where it's just a yeah, whole bunch yeah. of fucking shit on screen. Right, right. Um, so like, I would agree with you that that action scene is better, but I like the character building moments in Endgame much more. And the first hour of this movie is some of the best. Like you feel like you're with these characters as things are going down and you feel bad for them and you feel like these are real stakes that are finally coming to pass. And then when a lot of the ends of Endgame stuff starts happening, you really feel how much of a punch in the gut it is to lose Tony Stark. They have a huge funeral scene where fucking everyone in all of these movies is there. There's even the fucking kid from Iron Man 3. And I was looking at this kid being like, who the fuck is that? (laughs) Because like he's aged in about 10 years and like six. So well, I, yeah, he I guess, doesn't look at all like himself. I guess the, the analogy I would make is that Infinity War is kind of like Mad Max Fury Road, where it's just mm-hmm. awesome shit happening the whole time. And I maybe no, that's why I liked it so much. It can't that's be because Fury Mad Max Road Fury, Fury, Road, Fury Road has an intense focus on one like well, this, one Yeah, I mean, Infinity War has an intense focus on Thanos' journey. Yeah, Infinity War is... No, but there, there's so much stuff with... Uh, Tony Stark and Spider-Man and uh, Doctor Strange. Like, all of these characters that movie has to service kind of distracts from, like, the... Yeah, but no, no character... The only character really with an arc in that movie is Thanos, and the other characters realize, oh, I should have learned how to make a sacrifice. This wouldn't have happened if I knew how to sacrifice. Like, Thanos is the only character even with an arc in that movie. Well, I think Gamora and uh, Peter Quill have some kind of arc in that. Uh, Sure. Okay, but uh, I think that that's one of my bigger problems with that movie is that Thanos is really the only character who you're kind of rooting for or watching them do stuff in that movie. Everybody else gets to do something, but it's usually for like two or three scenes, and that's about it. I think in Infin, in, I'm sorry, in Endgame, you're seeing the conclusions of a lot of those characters' kind of storylines. So I think that's more satisfying for me to see that absolute conclusion yeah. than in Infinity War when it just kind of like stops at, at the snap. Like that's essentially the, the end of that. So Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Asterios, is this movie Kino? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a gigantic accomplishment. It's the capstone to kind I mean, look, there have been superhero movies before, these Marvel movies, but there have never been like, easy going free flowing just watchable superhero movies like there are like e- like even the original spider-man trilogy like i like spider-man 2 a lot but i don't want to go back and watch it as much as i do like the original avengers or ant-man um whoa 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 Ant- hold, hold up fam oh you'd rather Ant-Man. watch ant-man than motherfucking Ant-Man. spider-man 2 yeah because sitting oh. down to watch spider-man 2 is like you got that's like a day like, you got to put that on your calendar. But you can really? just throw Ant-Man on in the background and just be uh, like, yeah, let me do my taxes. Oh, uh, so you're happen. saying you care less about Ant-Man and it's an easier watch. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, wow. It's, it's <laughs> like, it's the same. I don't think Bob's Burgers is as good as American Dad, but I'm not always in the mood to, like, want to dissect some big issues. Like, sometimes I just want to watch, like, a fun little family fuck around at a burger shop. I think um, I'm understanding why you uh, you weren't bothered by the the female power scene because you just want like the most shallow, uh, easy to digest <laughs> movies possible. You don't want to think any deeper about them. Yeah, it's uh, it's fan service. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 like it's like uh, you know, like there there are shots of Captain America's ass that are not for me. 
but I'm like, okay, I hope, <laughs> I hope someone's enjoying these ass shots. Asterius, like, okay, that's whatever. America's ass. Yeah, yeah. That, it was specifically pandering to you as an American. They even said it's America's <laughs> ass in the film like three times. <laughs> I love Which, how they managed to get his ass in there, to, like in from two different time periods, two different yeah. asses. Well, I, I think again, um, that's one of the clever ways that the Russos were sort of, uh, I don't know if I would say fixing, if not poking fun at some of the Joss Whedon movie choices, because that costume in uh, Avengers it, twenty twelve is terrible. It's yeah, it's it's so stupid. Why would he be dressed yeah. like that? Everything else he wears is great. So I, I like well, that they make fun of okay. how tight it is on his ass. Okay, I love. Uh, the explanation for why it's so bad in the movie, the, the costume is absolutely horrible in the Avengers. <laughs> but the reason it's so bad is because Coulson designed it. Like, there is a huge Captain America fanboy who designed a shitty costume, <laughs> and that's that's the costume he's using in that movie. Yeah, it wasn't his explanation that uh, people need a little bit of old-fashioned right now, which is just a yeah. stupid explanation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Like, yeah. the helmet he's wearing is not functional. It would be cutting off mm -hmm. part of his vision. <laughs> he's also got a hoodie thing, like... Yeah. Part of it is a hoodie, almost. Stupid. <laughs> the Winter Soldier outfit is so much better. Anyway. Well, I think it was a nice ass. Yeah. Uh, would you say the ass is Kino? Yes. Can we Absolutely. All, we can all agree. Asterios? Oh, my God, yeah. It's okay. fantastic. Okay. Oh, are we, so we have, for, you. <laughs> for real, do we have any final thoughts, or should we end the end game discussion, folks? Are we done? I th I think it's time to start saying goodbye to Erich because he's someone who we all love and he's close to yeah. all of us. I mean, this is a show like literally. I listen to every episode of this is of is a Kino. Like, um, I I have an hour and a half long commute in the morning and at night, and so like I really depend on podcasts. And I am very very sad to see you go because, you know, like I can make all the jokes about wanting to replace you and all that. But you, the show that you do means a lot to a lot of people, and and so Erich, it's just going to be really sad to see you go. And I, I kind of, on behalf of all the fans, want to thank you for all the entertainment you've given us and just all the really cool. Like I don't always agree with everything you guys say, but it's always right. really interesting. Well, you to probably hear. agree with what Erich has to say. No, yeah. sometimes he's too on the nose. So I, I'm, I'm an idiot. Oh no. Wait, I, what? Even just on the nose after what you've been saying today? Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes his stuff, it's just like, it makes me, as a liberal, like, it makes me feel like, ooh, is that, is that what we sound like? Ugh. Yeah. Dude, you should I, listen I, I, back I, to what you said in these two last episodes. Well, I, mean, I, I get sound, Yeah, I, I, all the great stuff yeah. I said, yeah, I know, I'm great. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just listen to it again. Just make sure there's no sharp objects around. Well, um, I, I get, just, uh, I get secondhand embarrassment listening to myself, so, like, oh, I totally... Wow. I think in terms of really the, the metaphor of this be, this podcast is a lot like Avengers Endgame itself, where it's a, the end of an era. And much like mm. how Avengers Endgame sort of was a, a, a highlight reel of all of the other movies before it, this podcast that's been going on for over two hours now is essentially a highlight reel of what Is It Kino has been. Lots of yeah. needless arguing about uh, polit <laughs> politics and shit, uh, making fun of Asperger briefly. That's a, a classic Is It Kino thing. Uh, just, I, I think uh, this is the perfect send off. It's the ultimate culmination of what Is It Kino has been up to this point. And now that Tony Stark, uh, E. Rich McCoy, is uh, dying and, and leaving us, uh, yeah. the, much like how the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to suffer, I think this podcast itself will suffer <laughs> oh, deeply. Shit. Oh, no. Damn. Yeah. I think I'm ready to call it quits here. We should do what Marvel should do and just say this is the last one. No more. It's done. <laughs> it's been fun, but it's over. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, boy. Retire the whole Florian show. Florian will be out of a job. He depends no. on this podcast for his money. Yeah, don't, don't throw he me needs, out like that. He needs to buy corn pizza somehow. <laughs> yeah. If only we could bring this back somehow, then. Florian makes $1,000 per episode. How is he going to survive without it? Holy shit, how do I, make, how do, I do it? <laughs> uh, I guess uh, Erich will just leave it to you. Wait, say again? I said Erich will leave it to you now. I, we'll, uh, I guess this is the end. We'll, we'll give you the, the final goodbye. Right. Um, it has been so much fun uh, taking part in this podcast. Uh, I love talking about movies in general, and I think that uh, I, I am a huge idiot at times, but this podcast has really helped me to develop the way I do talk about these things. And I feel like I'm, I'm a better, more, uh, 
well-spoken person because of it. And I love talking about uh, these movies with Florian, of course, because we did fucking Sunday streams every goddamn week for the past year or so. Which so. you just deleted Actually, today live. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I closed that thing down. Yeah, I, yeah. So if, if you missed it, Erich had a, a YouTube channel with about 1,200 followers. Him and Florian mm-hmm. would do shows every week. And today during their live stream, Erich deleted the channel. <laughs> yeah, I snapped my fingers and it was gone. Um, That's fucking yeah. funny. <laughs> I had that for about a year and four months exactly. So, Do you know how yeah, hard I worked to get you to a thousand subs? I was begging people every day, please subscribe to yeah. me. And he's like, ah, no, I'll just delete it all. Pretty good. And Monkey, I got to say, like, you have been one of the best, most consistent things in my life where I knew that no matter what I was going through and no matter how hard my life was, I could come and talk to you about movies and everything else would just go away for that hour hour and a half two hours however long it was and sometimes uh, i would have to fight uh burger uh during that hour hour and a half <laughs> or fight but me, most get of the time a lot. <laughs> yeah yeah but most of the time it was incredibly uh rewarding and i just love talking with you uh, about these movies so it's it was very important to me it still is important to me and it's just something that i get so much joy out of so. It, a lot of people don't know this, but this podcast would no longer exist if it weren't for you, Erich, because when my uh-huh. YouTube channels were all deleted, uh, as uh-huh. far as I was concerned, the podcast was deleted, too. They didn't exist, but uh, I don't think we ever talked about this. You're the one who painstakingly uh, downloaded every single episode. <laughs> up, uh, you you paid for the iTunes right. feed. You put them all up on iTunes. Like, like that's mm-hmm. that's no joke. That's fucking hours and hours of work that I wasn't willing to do because I was a broken shell of a human being. So this mm-hmm. show wouldn't even exist anymore if not for uh, your contribution and your dedication and your hard work. Right. It was it was pretty easy, but I did spend a lot of time <laughs> on it. But uh, it, it's just a lot of that. Jeez. A lot of a lot of getting uh, MP3 files out of videos and then just uploading them essentially but uh yeah i i I do care about this i i I love being on it and it's an important part of my life and uh i love even just the occasional like hey erich i enjoy the things you say or even the occasional i don't like the things you say but i do like you on the show like (laughs) it does actually like do something for me and, and and i love hearing it so thank you everybody there in the chat everybody i've ever uh interacted with in comments on the youtube comment section and yeah, I've just had a great time here. Now, Florian, this is your uh, this is your uh, Fry's dog waited for him after he was uh, gone. <laughs> moment, please give oh, us no. give us the biggest tearjerker, sad goodbye <laughs> to Erich we could ever hope for. Oh, is this where we reveal that Erich is never gonna leave? <laughs> Could this be it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, Erich? Do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> You gave it away, you son of a bitch! Wait, what? Like, Erich is in... It's my I moment now. My heart out you, you motherfucker! What do you mean you're not leaving? I'm not leaving. I can't do that. Now, <laughs> Thank God let, let me explain. Because <laughs> people, people are going to be... Was this all some sort of fucking joke? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't a joke. It was because people are gonna be joke. people are gonna be mad at yeah. me because I've because I've been saying oh we're gonna do a, a get a new E Rich competition again yeah. I've been doing so many streams listening to people's submissions been emailing people back and forth saying oh yeah you'll be in the contest that that w- it was all real it wasn't until yeah, it l- literally was. yesterday E Rich said hey I think I want to stay on the show so don't blame me for your hopes and dreams being shattered E Rich <laughs> changed his fucking mind at the last minute. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I made the decision a couple weeks ago that I wasn't going to stay on the show. Um, I am going to delete a lot of my online presence for the most part, but I feel like a podcast is a different kind of thing where it's just me talking. So, I don't feel as bad about being on here. But, yeah, I'm. <laughs> so, you, what you're saying is you, we'll see I... you again in two weeks for Detective Pikachu. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Erich, Erich, yeah. at any point when I was giving my goodbye speech, why didn't you stop me and tell me that I didn't have to give it? It was too good. <laughs> How's the chat reacting? I haven't pulled up the chat. Is anybody it, upset? Great. They want a refund? They're all saying, 
<laughs> they took back all the nice things they said. I One of them said, stuck. I started crying for you. Someone yeah. here said, he made me look like a bitch. <laughs> Eric Erich cucked us all. <laughs> this is like if I'm Iron a... Man walked out at the end of Endgame and said, just kidding, I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean... Let's see if people are all the people who auditioned were cucked. We got emotionally cucked, fucking cucked. Evich you cucked should, us. Now they hate Evich more them, than ever. You should let them on the show so they can like yell at me the entire time. Yeah, we should do a special. We should do um, Evich McCoy is he Kino, and everybody calls in to say what they think of you. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, we, we need yeah. to get in all the the people who are gonna be Evich tryouts, and they need to yell at Evich for not quitting. Yeah, we, we need to have that. Well, <laughs> I think with that. <laughs> uh, this is the end of uh, Is It Kino number Who the fuck knows how long How many uh, You guys want to plug your shit I guess Erich you have a whole YouTube channel to plug still I know I got nothing anymore <laughs> uh, Asterios thanks for joining us uh, You should plug all your shit uh, Thanks for having me if, if you like hearing me and Monkey Jones You should listen to our podcast Boomer versus Zoomer. Um, if you enjoyed the 15 minutes of me and him arguing, tune into that show because it's nothing but. <laughs> oh, oh I would never do that on, on our show. No, I have too much. Yeah, you're way more show. charitable on there. Yours. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can listen to Boomer versus Zoomer on iTunes or Spotify, Google Play. And also, if you go to youtube.com slash Asterios, we upload uh, every episode. And so I, I hope you enjoy. Cool. Uh, I guess. For is it Kino? I've been oh. Monkey Jones. Oh no, I don't get to shill. <laughs> no, 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 you get a shill as you say goodbye. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta say, now that you can't promote Erich's channel anymore, you, you can promote my channel a lot more because I, I hired an editor and my videos will have a slight increase in quality oh, from shit. now on. Good yeah, Game so Squid on YouTube, that. people. Oh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Game Squid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Erich, I think it's time for you to give your, your final goodbye, your big send-off. We'll never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of just don't want to come on the next episode, so people think that I was lying here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really Schrodinger's Erich. Is he alive or dead? Nobody knows yet. Yeah. we got to open that box. I, everything I tell you is a lie. <laughs> you don't know. He's the Loki of this <laughs> podcast. Who knows? He's a, he's a trickster. Yeah. All right. That's bye, right. everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, wow. Oh, man. Wow. What an epic. That was great. You know, two and a half hours <laughs> long once I plug oh, in the, the first half that uh, fucked up because my computer died. Oh, Is yeah. Is that the longest one we've done? Or... Oh, definitely. It's got to be. Oh, fuck. The oh, E-Rich really arc is to... an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> hey, I got to go. Sorry. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, thanks for coming See on. See you, man. Well, I just have to pee, but I'll be back. Okay, well, I don't know how much longer the stream's going to go on. That was, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that was, was fun. Well. I always, I genuinely enjoy getting into heated arguments about, like, dumb shit, like, when oh, you're right. in a movie. I, like, I thought it was awful. <laughs> half the time, I don't even know if I actually believe what I'm saying. I just think it's fun to argue it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> you so, fucking troll. I, I don't know. I don't, it's, uh... That's why I really enjoyed the, the podcast I did with Digibro, the insufferable mm. social media argument, because it's just pick a stance and argue as hard as you can for it forever uh, and never give in. And I, I think that's mm. one of my favorite things to do. I think it's a lot of fun. Wow. Have you seen that rant he did about <laughs> you in that one where, where he said that he was thinking that you were believing some of the offensive standpoints that you were making? Who? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Oh, you didn't see the latest Digibro rant on you? <laughs> no, I don't watch Digibro. He ranted about me? He ranted about the Isma podcast, I guess. Oh. Well, it wasn't Sur all bad, Surely he didn't say funny. anything bad about that show, because me and him both really no, enjoyed he, that he show. he liked it. Oh, okay. He just saw that, that you were being too serious about these arguments. I guess you fooled him into thinking <laughs> you actually meant these arguments. Well, I, so was that too, was I was too much. serious about who has a bigger dick, Jesus or Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like we, talk, we didn't talk about actual politics on that show. I know. How does he even figure this out? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't care about what DigiPro has to say about me. Oh no! Did somebody clip Erich's speech? Uh, I didn't yeah, cry for okay. Iron Man. Fucking Erich almost made me tear up with his <laughs> bullshit speech. So mad. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna toilet be right back. Okay. <laughs> didn't DigiPro yeah. argue to fuck a baby?
Uh, oh wow! Did, did he? Well, yeah, it was a great show. Everything we oh. said it was absurd. Jesus Christ! It was like, what's the what's the best way to dispose of your cum? And I think mine was wipe it on a uh -huh. cat, and his was to eat it. <laughs> or maybe it was reversed. I don't remember. But it's just that's the kind of show it was, and we didn't have serious arguments, and that's why it was so fun. Some people come into socks, and then they just have a cum sock. <laughs> I, I guess how, so. How often do you wash the sock? Is my question. Yeah, just shoot it into the toilet like a normal guy. Right. <laughs> the poop sock. No fuss, no muss. Yeah. Well, E. Rich, are you gonna uh, delete your Twitter account? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, so you're just going to exist idea. on Florian's podcast and my podcast now. What I'll probably do is just delete my uh, all my tweets and then change my handle. Okay. What are you going to change so, it to? Uh, um, all not e rich Official yeah, E-Rich? Yeah, exactly. Official not E-Rich. <laughs> E-Rich e Vivo? They'll never know. No. This account is not ran by E-Rich? I think somebody sent me a very long... A very long social media post about how great I am. Yeah, they thought you were leaving. <laughs> yeah. As did I until great. yesterday. <laughs> this is just me emotion baiting. I'm essentially trying to get an, a reaction, but not a not a negative reaction, not like anger. I want to get love and affection and attention. And I plan on doing this in the next two years as well. Well, the problem is uh, when, <laughs> when people realize the trick you pulled, the inverse emotion comes out, and now they all are angry and hate you. <laughs> They'll just be fuck you here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I get. That's what I get normally. So like, yeah, it won't be any different. D save Somebody your said, vods as highlights. I don't need to save them because I upload them to my YouTube channel. Dens, you want to watch this? Go to YouTube next week. That's right. So this guy said you won every debate with Asperger, even when you were drunk, which is good to hear. Oh, to you? Yeah, to me. Oh, okay. I, I already you, knew that. You guys but had it's like a, a two-hour argument about the Last Jedi that I thought was yeah, pretty we, even, yeah. right? And, and that's completely deleted now. <laughs> that that will never be on. Oh, that on that wasn't again. an episode of Kino. Nope, nope. Oh, I think I still have it. Oh, did you upload it? No, I think I just might have it okay. in one of the archives that somebody sent me. But I'm uh, not I sure. see, I see. I All thought right. that was a Kino episode. <clears throat> hmm. Was it? Probably not. Because I remember we, we did one on my channel as just me and him. But, yeah, it's possible we did it for Kino and then – Well, I because you guys channel. recorded a two-hour episode, and then one of you asked me <laughs> to upload it to my channel. So it was on Monkey Jones mm -hmm. too. I see. I see. Okay, so that probably is on the, the okay. archive there. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> Asperger was right. We do need to beat women. Fuck you. Oh, holy shit was that a super cast i want you to read that out you are the worst cuck you are the cuck smell to our beta cousins you may come our country you may live in the <laughs> what the fuck man you played that one so straight i i, I almost just was doubting that you were really not quitting i thought wow. mom kid just trolled me when he told me that you weren't actually quitting <laughs> yeah you monster <laughs> man, now you you're all the cuck do you really think they will have Rogue from yeah. X-Men take away most of Captain Marvel's powers like they did in the comics? Uh, I doubt it. I don't they're think like, they're going to nerf where is Captain the... Marvel ever. But she takes on their powers. So, like, all of the complaints about being overpowered would, would stay. They're just on a different character now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sad that Eerich isn't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Replace Eerich with Asperger? I... I wish I could. Wow. And I had such plans to make this a, a do a podcast. Oh no, it's all yeah. over. Well, boys, I uh, I think that's it for the stream. Unless you guys wanted to say anything else to the uh, lovely chatting audience. Wait, oh, man, is, isn't reading out the chat the worst part of every stream? Oh boy, let me tell you about those chat people. <laughs> all right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our two and a half hour long discussion spoiling a movie. And uh, I'll see you yeah. in the next stream. I guess I'll see you tomorrow night with the Depression Chamber. How's that sound? Oh, sweet. Yeah. I should watch that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.